What started as the Parmar Oil Company in 1967 has grown into 116 convenience stores in four states. Parmar convenience stores offer monthly product specials and grab-and-go items. Located just down the street from where you live, Parmar stores are all about being your above-par convenience store. If you don't have a Parmar store near you now, you will soon. Parmar convenience stores, neighbors serving your community and making life a little bit easier every day. It's trick-or-treat season, and there's three things I can't wait to do. Give away all my candy corn. I'm just not into it. Put on my costume of my best amigo, Wes. Pretty spot on, don't you think? And haul away all my candy in my brand new truck from Dutch Miller Ram of South Charleston. During Ram Power Days, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for up to six years on select 2022 Ram Crew Cab and Quad Cab Laramies and Bighorns. Ranked one of the best mobile banking apps in the country. True story. Welcome to Huntington. Buying a car is easier than ever. We're introducing the area's only personal shopper to help you find the perfect ride. This no pressure team can help you find a vehicle in your budget, appraise your trade, work out payments, even pick out a vehicle that fits your needs and send you all the information. You can have the car delivered to your house or choose our fast pass delivery and we'll have everything ready for you to pick up your new car quickly. Tell us exactly what you're looking for, your payment range and terms, and let us find the best options for you. Just go to tajayfloor.com and see for yourself. August 5th, 2013 was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. It turned into a nightmare. Harmony was too big for me to pass through my pelvis. They thought the best option was to put the vacuum on her. She begged for a C-section over and over and over. They wanted to rush through it. Once Harmony came out, she was, it probably wasn't five minutes. They rushed her to NIC unit and then her head swelled the size of a watermelon. It pretty much crushed her whole skull. Ben Salingo was recommended to us by a family friend that he had represented. Having Ben Salingo on our side changed everything for the better. From day one, he did everything for us. He kept in touch with us pretty much on a daily basis to let us know what was going on and even just to check on us. It gave us closure as a family, a peace, a calming feeling over us that she can rest in peace. Make sure you are informed with HD Media. We are leading the state in local, digital, and print media. We are storytellers. We focus on education, health, entertainment, politics, opinions, sports, and the outdoors through our websites, print, or social and mobile apps. We work every day to enhance the lives of our customers by informing, entertaining, and empowering our readers in the communities we serve. We are HD Media. Winter is coming. It's time to remember Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. With cooler days ahead, now is the time to call Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling and schedule your heating system tune-up. Our experienced technicians will provide you peace of mind with our comprehensive 15-point system service. The Mullen Heating System Service and Safety Inspection will ensure you aren't left in the cold this winter. Remember, Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Call and schedule your tune-up today or visit us online at mullenplumbing.com. The son and grandson of coal miners, Mike Stewart has a record of fighting for us. President Trump's pick for U.S. Attorney, Stewart fought drugs, crime, and corruption. Mike Stewart will fight for better jobs, lower inflation, and your values. I'm Mike Stewart, a conservative, not a politician. My opponent, another Biden liberal. He votes their values. I'll vote yours. Mike Stewart, a strong new leader for the state Senate. Call State Farm Agent Matthew Rousey at 304-925-8000 today. Hi, I'm West Virginia State Senator Eric J. Tarr, and I chair the Committee on Finance for the State Senate in West Virginia. I'm asking you to vote yes on Amendment 2. Without passing Amendment 2, the tax on your cars and trucks is here to stay. If you pass Amendment 2, we can eliminate the tax on your cars and trucks and vehicles that you depend on every day. Vote yes on Amendment 2 
it gives the legislature a lot more flexibility on how we can restructure taxes in West Virginia so you keep more money in your pocket. I'm attorney Bobby Warner. Congress recently created a fund to compensate victims of Camp Lejeune who were exposed to toxic waters between 1953 and 1987. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with cancer or other health issues related to toxic water exposure at Camp Lejeune, call today for a free case evaluation. Bobby Warner, now's the time. Call 345-6789. We know who we are, where we have been, and where we are going. Healthcare is ever-changing, and we are evolving to meet the future needs of our community. Thomas Health is honored to announce our affiliation with the WVU Health System. WVU Health System and its network of hospitals and physicians across West Virginia Ohio and Pennsylvania will allow Thomas Health to elevate and expand the current services we offer to this region. With broader access to specialists and subspecialists and the full support of the preeminent health system in our state, we look forward to being your first choice for medical care. Together, proudly serving our community and the state of West Virginia today and tomorrow. Ball Toyota is here for you. Gas prices got you down? Toyota has a hybrid for everyone. Like the 53 MPG Corolla or Camry, the 58 MPG Prius, the 41 MPG RAV4, the 40 MPG Venza, and the 36 MPG Highlander. Need more room or want to haul a trailer or boat? Get the new 22 MPG Tundra Hybrid. Give your new Toyota the protection it deserves with a genuine Toyota service contract. Visit BallToyota.com. Ball Toyota of Charleston. It's a whole new ball game. And you are looking live here. Everyone's been using it tonight, Coach Goebel, <laughs> paying homage to big game Brent Musburger himself. But at Winfield Stadium here, home of the Generals, a top five battle coming your way here between the home Winfield Generals and the Scott Skyhawks, the number one team in AA. Going to be a fun one tonight, Coach Goebel. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. And like I told you, it's going to be the infantry versus the Air Force. The Generals will be rolling out here with that vaunted – pounding ground game and then uh, the Skyhawks will answer with uh, putting the fill in the air with footballs. Should be a really interesting matchup. Both of them very tough defensively as well. Absolutely Coach Go. Well there's an electric atmosphere here tonight in Winfield. A little crisp in the air. You know the playoffs are coming. Both teams trying to solidify that seating. Trying to get that home game maybe all the way to Wheeling Island here. And that's what's at stake tonight. Yeah, and it, it's got a, you know, uh, these are the kind of games that these kids live for to play because, you know, Winfield unblemished after their uh, tough loss to Hurricane in the opener, and the Skyhawks have not had a loss, as you know, the whole year. So these are two well-coached teams with some talent on either side, and it's going to be uh, really interesting to see who's going to prevail on this one. Absolutely. Both teams average right at 40 points a game. Both give up about 16. It's going to be interesting to see which one kind of plays into their tempo and their pace. Winfield, obviously, the last three games put up 60 in each contest. Coach Goble, they're rolling. Competition wasn't the same as the Scott defense, though, tonight. That's true. And when you get it against someone like this, is, is and I, I refer to it as ebb and flow, and how well can your team adapt to sudden change? If there's a turnover or if someone scores real quick or anything, you have to, to refocus on what you're doing, and whoever responds and does that the best will be the winner tonight. Absolutely. It's like old uh, Sonny Randy used to say, old Mo. Yeah, Jump on the back the there. Mo, yep. Whoever keeps it the longest is probably going to be the team that gets it done here tonight. Wish we could have had you guys here with us for the PA announcement. Winfield, <laughs> they're, they're pubbing this game up, guys. It's the war zone. They've got the camo uniforms. They're trying to bag, like they said, the elusive Scott Skyhawk here on the Canal River tonight going to be a fun one. We can't wait to bring it to you. We're about T-minus five minutes away from kickoff. Coach Goble, 
What's what are we saying in the locker room right now? Especially if you're the home team here, you're I wouldn't maybe say the underdog, but you know you're you're lower in the rankings. What are you saying to your team? Well, one of the things I always told my guys was, and I told my coaches in a situation like this, we shouldn't really have to say too much to them. right. You, you don't know, have the juice yeah, for this one. And, yeah, and, and sometimes you have to calm them down a little bit. I remember one time when I was coaching at uh, Countryside High School in Clearwater. Or six That's eight. a heck of a name, Coach Gable, Countryside High. Yeah, sounds good. Like yeah. I want some lemonade or something after and, that. Yeah, and it was a uh, it was a six A school had about three thousand students. And we were playing our rival right down the road, and we had to beat them to stay. They have district playoffs there, and we had to stay in, had to beat them to stay in to be able to get into the state playoffs. And I sat there, and uh, my sisters were sitting in the office with me, and they kept going, "Bob, are you going, are you going, not going to go out there and say anything?" <laughs> I said, "Yeah, hold on a minute." You know, and I, that was back when you had the old metal tip cleats, and you could hear them clacking in there. And I just walked in the dressing room, opened the door, and I looked at all of them. I said. I'm going to the state playoffs. Who's going with me? That's right. And they all ran through the about door. Tore the door off the hinges, yeah. That's, that's right. Now, Coach Gobel, we talked about Winfield, and they're getting ready to come on out right now. The generals are you here, the we ready, that's the staple. What are you yeah. telling what are you telling Scott if, if you're coach Coach Dolan and Scott right now? You know, you're the number one team. You're coming in here. They're gunning for you big time. What are you saying if you're if you're Scott? Well, you just tell them, you know, uh, we've been here before. Uh, you guys prepared well this week. You know what's going to happen, and once again, what I always talk about, I reiterate all the time, you have to be able to adapt to things when they don't go your way. And, uh, you know, you, and you go, and it truly is a, a thing where you go one play at a time. If you have a fumble or something, you say, okay, you, got, you have to live in the moment, mm -hmm. okay? Um, Win the battle, that play, right. play the next yeah, play, right? Yeah, because Absolutely. what's happened is gone now. What's going to be is not here yet. You got to live in that moment and do the best you can in that moment. Absolutely, it's kind of like a Rich Rod used to always say that the Lion King quote. You know, right. it's in the past. Right. You, you got to move on. The, the old yeah. Rafiki, old Rafiki line there. And and it's it's tough to do, particularly at this level, for kids to refocus and, and do like that because, you, you know, it's an emotional game, particularly one like this. And uh, you see them come out here at first. They're going to be fired up and flying around and it'll take them a little while to settle down and get in the groove but Absolutely. Once, you get, once you get out there and bang a little bit and you start getting into the groove then things will start happening the way they should yeah, if you pop somebody real quick right. there you feel like you get into the game right. a little bit and you see coming down there gathering in the end zone are the generals smolder soldiers little little inner sandman here Kind of uh, taking a page out of the Hokies. Everyone seems to want to do that now. Coach yeah. Gable. Well, it looks like they're uh, ready for battle too with the camo on. And uh, some a few times tonight, if we can't see the exact number of these guys, please forgive us because they have some pretty good camo. Yeah, absolutely, on. it's really good. <laughs> and here comes the generals coming through the tunnel. And I was going to say, if that paper knocked the guy down with the flag, the game's probably already over. <laughs> <laughs> they picked the guy they wanted. They trusted him to get through that go. coach Gobel. You almost got to think maybe they even practice that pre-game pre a little bit. They've got it down to an art here at Winfield. We are just a few minutes away. We'll take a quick commercial break, and we'll come on back with the kickoff. When you come back, it's RSN Game of the Week. What started as the Parmar Oil Company in 1967 has grown into 116 convenience stores in four states. Parmar convenience stores offer monthly product specials and grab-and-go items. Located just down the street from where you live, Parmar stores are all about being your above-par convenience store. If you don't have a Parmar store near you now, you will soon. Parmar convenience stores, neighbors serving your community and making life a little bit easier every day. It's trick-or-treat season, and there's three things I can't wait to do. Give away all my candy corn. I'm just not into it. Put on my costume of my best amigo, Wes. Pretty spot on, don't you think? And haul away all my candy in my brand new truck from Dutch Miller Ram of South Charleston. During Ram Power Days, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for up to six years on select 2022 Ram Crew Cab and Quad Cab Laramies and Bighorns. So we're back here at Winfield High School. You see down there the coin toss is taking place. Captains from both teams out there got their marching orders. In this game where Winfield's wearing the camera, I think it's rather appropriate. Coach Gobel in here with me. We're excited 
for this top five matchup between the Generals and the Scott Skyhawks. Coach Gilby, you talked a little bit about Scott and their ability to throw the football with Matt Fry. Yes, Matt Fry in all classifications, ranked number two in the state of West Virginia throwing the football now. He's elusive, and uh, he's, he's got a pretty nice arm, but the thing about it is it's really going to impress you when you see him play tonight is his accuracy. He can lay that ball on the money. And the question is, how much time will he have to lay that ball on the money? Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's interesting you bring that up, Coach Goble, because Scott's only allowed six sacks the entire year. Fry does have a little bit of mobility as well. He averages about 55 yards on the ground a game. Big kid, smart, 6'1", 175-pound junior. He's, he's the key tonight. If Winfield can get pressure, they're going to have a good opportunity. You know, you always say if you move the quarterback off the spot a little bit, it changes things. If you're throwing and you got all day, you're going to yeah, make it happen. Then you get into the yin and the yang as far as protection or reading defenses and everything because essentially, particularly if Winfield starts blitzing a lot, there's only two things you can do. You can either throw hot, and what that means is the receiver has been trained to replace the area where the blitzer is coming from and dump the ball to him where it's an open area. Mm -hmm. Or you can use an additional blocker in the backfield to help pick up the person who's blitzing. So it's going to be interesting how all that goes this evening, too. Get the ball out of your hands fast. That's going to be the key for Fry here this evening. Appears that Winfield is going to be kicking it off to Scott. Did not hear who won the toss, Coach Gobel. We've always said tails never fails. That's right. But then people say you play heads up as well. So either way you want to go about it, going to be a fun one here this evening. Excited for this one. I hope you guys are excited oh, man, to watch I'm it with you us. What, there, there is a crowd here, and they are ready to rock and roll. Everyone in attendance ready to go. Aiden Hernandez will boot it here for the Generals. And you hear the crowd getting into a little bit of a lather there. Toe's about to meet the leather here. Number five versus number one, and it's off in a squib there. And the Skyhawks will grab it at the 35, cross to the 40, and they're going to get down about the 42-yard line there. And so now it'll be Matt Fry leading his offense out onto the field. They also have a pretty good running game as well, Coach Goebel. Yeah, that was a uh, senior uh, offensive lineman, Isaiah Brown, on that dynamic return there. Hey, it, was, it was dynamic, it was. Coach Goebel. Six foot, 244 pounds. He plowed right through there, man. That wouldn't be a lot of fun to tackle, I don't he, believe. He wanted to go and hit somebody right off the bat, and you got to love it. Well, especially for linemen, you put a football in their hands, they go crazy anyway. You here, know. here comes Fry out of the gun. Ball at the 41 here, first and 10. And he will hand it off. Around to the 40, to the 45 there. Little end around action. Nicely done on that run by Carson Ringear. Carson, a versatile player. He also does a great job as a receiver. Yeah, they definitely want to get into his hands as often as possible. Seven yard pickup there on the end around. Good little call there by Scott, keeping him off balance to start the game. Yeah, they do a lot of things. So Fry now in the gun. Cooper takes takes the carry there. Going to pound it inside. A host of generals was there to corral him. Maybe a yard, Coach Goble. Maybe. Those guys, uh, you know, Winfield uh, hasn't won every game except one for not being tough. You know, they, they, they're really good up front uh, defensively and offensively. Tough sledding in there for Scott on that initial carry of the ball game. Yeah, and one of the guys you'll see in there for the Generals, Jackson Cunningham, who's uh, also plays center, and he's a, a really tough defender. Fry under center here on third and three. And the toss. Trying to get to the outside, and he is going to get to the outside, and he's going to get the first down. Carson Bringer again there on the outside. Line and it's a first down for Scott. Line up the, those three guys to the top of your screen. They call that a tight trips. Obviously, because there's three receivers up there, tossed it out there real quick, got the blocking they needed on the edge. Brian Gear's been the man to this point for Scott that has kind of gotten him moving there for one offense. And so the initial first down of the ball game picked up by Scott. That's going to be a key as well. you got to think, Coach Goble, if you're Scott, keeping your offense on the field. And when you throw the ball like this, you got to remember when you're on a hash mark, Compared to college or pro, it's a long way to the wide side of the field. Low if you snap there, there for Fry. He's going to get what he can. A little extra curriculars there after the play on the far sideline there. 
not much there for Fry. Jackson Cunningham, I was speaking about, come from a good lineage. His dad, Rob Cunningham, was a first-team All-State player here at Winfield and also was a defensive tackle for the Thundering Herd. Never hurts to have good genes, Coach Gobe, when a guy who's played some ball in Huntington definitely helping and probably tutelaging Jackson there. And so here comes Fry, second and 12, out of the shotgun snap. He'll look to throw, chucks it downfield, and it's going to be broken up. Attempted to hit his man Isaiah Bush, but it's incomplete. From that time, they elected to go protection-wise instead of throwing hot. They had a, a player line up on the wing to the right side, and he didn't run around. He stayed in there and helped pass protect that time. But you got to wonder, Coach Gobble, does that mean Scott maybe already adjusting on the game plan though, a little bit? Could be. I would think this early in the game, he's probably trying to feel things out and see how trying they're lining up. Yeah, see how they're uh, lining up and how they're adapting. You know, you always have that chess match going. See the different looks that you're getting early, especially sure. in this type of game. So 10-18 here. And we're going to have ourselves a timeout taken on the field, it appears. And so a little, little bit of confusion. Whistle blue, not sure exactly. No one's really told it us anything. It looked like the official called it himself. Maybe he had some equipment issues or something. Something going on. Something going on. And so now Fry will take the snap here out of the shotgun. Shuffles his feet. He's going to take off. And he's going to not get even anywhere close to the first down there. Good pursuit. Looked like it was Cunningham on that play again, wasn't it, Coach Cobb? Yes, and uh, there you go, what I was talking about. It, you, it's hard to throw that football if you've got that much pressure on you. A lot of heat coming on Fry here early in the game. And so a fourth and ten coming up. And we're going to see a punt coming here from Scott. You know, and as coaches, you have to be able to adapt to what's going on there, you know, and figure out how to stop or how to go or whatever. And so a bad snap, but he's going to get it off. Not a bad punt at all, considering the circumstances. It's going to roll, and he's going to pick it up at the 20, across the 25, juking and dancing there across to the 27-yard line there. Nice return. About 12 on the carry. It's uh, number seven, I think. No, that wasn't number seven. Real My hard bad. real hard to see these uniforms yep. here today, Coach Go with these camo. <laughs> Not doing us any favors. If it was seven, <laughs> it was Bray Boggs. Yeah, Bray Boggs, that's who it was. My bad. Totes the rock for him on offense, and he also was back there getting his hands as many times as possible to turn the punts. Here we go. First possession for Winfield. Brown under center. He'll hand it off. No, he didn't there. A fake there by Nice Brown. option there. Rode the dive back in there. Ran a little uh, quarterback keep around the edge. Winfield is going to continually keep trying to keep Scott off balance, misdirection. If, you, if you're familiar, kind of like an Air Force type attack on Saturdays. Right. And it is literally off balance. They usually have more players to one side of the ball than the other. They bring him in motion, does Boggs. And uh, sometimes show something. they'll go to the strength where there's more players to one side of the football. And other times they'll counter back to the weak side away from that. Okay. So it's it's tough to defend. Clock rolling here, 845. Gain a six there on the first down carry from Brown, and he will now hand it off to Boggs, and he's going to break loose there at the 45, across to the 50, to the 40. He's continuing to stay on his feet, and he's going to get down to the 39-yard line. A big gainer there. And you can just from Bray Boggs. call me the soothsayer because they did just what I was talking about. <laughs> they ran that trap to the weak side away from the formation. And what I'm saying is there are fewer players to the side they went to, but the Skyhawks were expecting the power and stuff to the majority of the guys on the other side. Big time carry from Boggs. Coach Go, well, you've been in the game a little while. I think you might you might know a thing or two right there. You, you had it, you had it, you had a peg there. There you go. And so 8:15. Rolling here, first quarter, Winfield getting the keys out, driving the car here a little bit on the opening drive. Ball on the 39, Boggs. Brown there taking it around the edge, and he's going to get inside of the 15, going to be knocked out of bounds. And what I was talking about there, they, that time they ran it to the strong side where you have more players over there. They had, a, they had a guard and a tackle and a tight end and a wing back the same size as a tight end. It's the way they're lining up again. You'll see here, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have uh, 
Well, now they're, they're going to the other side now, as you can see, to the left. Gain of 26 got, there, right. Coach Goble. And that's, that's instant strength over there. He has two running backs to the left-handed side. Brown executing this option attack to perfection here on the first drive. And, and here he's going to hand it off to his fullback. Scott, Scott Hawks did a great job of plugging that up right there. They tried to trap that to no avail. Bean got himself one there on the carry. Second and nine here now. If, if you're Scott, opportunity to bow your neck, get tough here in the red zone. That was a, a good play by uh, their senior uh, linebacker, a uh, defensive lineman rather, Connor Hughes on that play. And they'll hand it off inside down to the nine there. Boggs on the carry. And you'll notice also the generals are completely content to burn that clock and just work it down the field. Absolutely. Ball control offense. They don't want to let Fry get too many times right. to, to pitch it down the field. So a third and seven here coming for Winfield. They can get themselves a first down without getting into the end zone. But a big play here, third and seven. They'll send the man in motion. Boggs trying to see a look out of Scott. Playing a little chess game right now. And alignment, once again, if you look, he there are six players to the right-hand side of the football. And the handoff inside. Not a lot there. Caden Beam. Beam on the carry there. And I will tell you this. I've, I've uh, done some games with the Generals here. And number 34 just got his hands on the ball. If that guy gets lubed up, lubed up and gets going, hang on. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely has a head full of steam when he gets going yeah, here. He's, so he's very impressive. Fourth down here, Coach Goble. Six to go. Winfield continuing to have their offense out here. And they're going to take it from the shotgun on fourth down and six. Brown back to pass, and he's going to fling it in the end zone, and it's going to be caught. Wow. Touchdown for Winfield. That is <laughs> Big time play. That's what happens when you grind it and hand it every play and run it, run it, run it, run it. Guess what? Hello. Yes, sir. The backside defensive end was playing the run all the way. What a catch right there. Yes. Going up, high-pointing the football. And a great effort getting across the goal line. Absolutely. And a, and a huge, huge turn of events to start off this game for Winfield. And... Extra point will be good. And so it's 7 nothing here. <laughs> look, kind of looked like an extra punt. <laughs> but it counts, doesn't it? Did I just see a flag on the play? Don't, don't believe so, Coach Goble. Although they are discussing right now. Hmm. Might have been a marker. I'm not sure. And so Winfield yeah, on the Yeah, there is a drive. flag on the play. Look yes, at that. Yes, they're in. They're all crowded around it like they're examining it. Trying to figure out. It's like a Skyhawk. Hawkeye, what, baby. What was going on there? Blends Here well we with this turf, call. Coach Goble. what he says. Personal, Personal foul. foul here against Winfield. Hmm. And it'll be enforced on the Bray Balls. I just saw where he said number seven. I, I was trying to remember, do they say the players' numbers in high school I now? Or? I didn't think they did. Coach yeah, well, <laughs> if, if they don't, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Boggs and the Boggs family, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But, I, it, I, hey, it, I'll tell you one thing about Bray Boggs. He's a football player, and he will get after you. Absolutely. And the, yeah. and the touchdown throw there from Brown. Receiver came down and high pointed. And this, Lowry in a nice play by him. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, as we talk about the emotions are riding high here, you know, it's it's uh, it's controlled aggression all the time, you know, absolutely. trying to control it. They're in the war zone tonight. Sure, Coach, absolutely. Coach Goble, they, they told us that before we got rolling here at Winfield tonight. And the kick in the air. So the field position war could have been one right there, but Scott having a little bit of trouble with it. Going to get down to the 37-yard line. That's twice now that the squib has kind of worked well there for yep. Winfield. Preston Cooper bobbling that a little bit, but he finally got a hold of it to take care of everything there. 
interesting, you know, a running back typically gets to put it right in the bread basket, <laughs> right, when it's kind of right. fumbling around or it's kind of like a ground ball with the funny hop here. It was a little more difficult for Cooper. Well, and the thing about it is Skyhawks definitely have the, the speed and the talent to run one back on you, so I'm sure that's what they're thinking. So Fry with the shotgun snap here. He's going to hand it to Cooper. And Cooper's going to get himself about two yards here. That was the good old Washington Redskins counter tray there. We bring the backside guard to kick out on the defensive end and lead the tackle up to the hole. If, if some of you older fans out there can remember John Riggins making a living off of that play. John they, Riggins, see those highlights of the yes, Super Bowl sir. Yep, and, and, him. and they called their Lyman the Hogs, if you'll recall. Mark May, probably yeah. the worst analyst in ESPN history was, oh, a, was yeah. a hog there. Sure. Second and nine for Scott. 5-15 and ticking here first quarter. Snap for Fry. Got heat. Going to dump it off, oh, and it's incomplete. Man. Wow. Brian Gear was not able to haul that one in. He has some real estate out there, too. Big third and nine now coming for you see, Scott. You see one thing that Scott does, and I'm, I'm, I would think they're probably going to – Get it in gear here a little bit. Of course, give Winfield credit too, but that the uh, Scott's offensive line has worked real well in harmony like a machine for weeks now, and it seems like the generals are disrupting that rhythm a little bit. You know, absolutely they have been to this point, Coach Goodwin. So Fry with the snap, heat coming all off him. He's going to fling it down the field, and it's almost intercepted. I don't know where he was going with Whew, that one. Almost. Almost picked off by by Brown, the quarterback, back there as a safety. And we are witnessing right now why Winfield has been winning games. Defense, running game. Oh, man. A lot of talent on that defensive line. And they're getting after Fry here in the early going. Scott's now going to pump for the second time in the ball game. 5-0-4 in the first. Number one on the ropes here early. And the snap is back, and the kick is off. And it looked like it might have got a little bit tipped there. There's a flag on the play. Might be a running into the kicker, Coach Goebel. It's going to continue to roll. And it'll come to a stop at the 27-yard line. That's where Winfield will take it when we come back. But we're also going to stay here real quickly, see what the penalty was. So during this conversation here from the officiating crew, we want to let you know that Kroger will be sponsoring the play of the game for all our productions. Stay tuned to the fourth quarter, and we will let you know who the Kroger player of the game is at that point in time. Coach, go. we got a few nominees early here, especially on the Winfield side. Yes, sir. They're stirring it up. and, and But uh, stay tuned, folks, because there's a lot of football left to play yet. It's I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see some fireworks on both sides of the ball before it's over with. Absolutely, although Coach Smolder definitely and his crew want to keep the ball on the ground here, continue to make that Scott defense tired at this point in time. Coming out in a, a normal, uh, regular wing tee position here now, two tight ends and two wings and one running back, so they could take it either way. Did not give him much of a rest on the side there for Scott, and the handoff up the middle to Beam. Going to pick up a few there. Maybe three. Like I said, you carry. get that guy warmed up and get him in rhythm. He is a tough dude to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and say mistakenly, a gain of five there. Beam just continued to fall forward on the carry, Coach Goble. Got to imagine a guy like Beam toward in the fourth quarter is going to be a real low. Yes, he is. Especially as long as Scott's defense has been out there to this point in time. So they bring the man in motion again there. Same formation, same motion. See if they do something different with Tempton, it now. Tempton oh, to get they're Scott, changing the play. Tempton Scott to, to show their hand defensively. They did not. And the handoff up the middle again. He's going to go. Beam across to the 36-yard line. Big-time carry. And like you said, you don't want to let him get ahead of steam. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, you get that guy rolling, he's going to be a, a handful. Appears at this point in time, Coach Goble, that Scott is – very cautious about maybe getting beat on the perimeter there with Boggs and Brown, and it's opening up the middle there for Beam. Yeah, another thing that's happening, they're lining up in a balanced formation now, so the defense is the same on both sides of the ball, and they know exactly where to go and block it that way, you know. you got to be impressed right now with what Winfield 
He's bringing into the table. You saw Tanner Lowry checking in there, bringing in the play for the, for the Generals. 3.38, clock ticking. First down and 10 for Winfield. And the toss, and he's going to throw a pass, it looks like. No, he's going to pump, 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 pump again. He's going to get down to the 30-yard line. Looks like he was hoping to get one going there. <laughs> they had something drawn up there. Boggs wanted to chuck it. But Scott obviously had it defended. And uh, Jackson Cunningham and Xander Huffman and Isaac Arthur, Logan Howe, Jacob Ingram, those guys up front are, are getting warmed up now. I think lead. they're going to start rolling again. They're leading the way there on that play. So a second and seven. Ball just inside the 30-yard line for Winfield. They're going to hand it off on the fullback dive there to Beam. Not as successful uh oh, and Scott came away Same with they, it. There was a fumble. I, I don't know, Coach Go, but sure looked like to me that Beam was, yeah, down. He was down. Yeah, it's one of those you hope you could fool the official. They wouldn't come up here and ask us for a replay booth. You know. Yeah. Don't think West Virginia is quite there yet. <laughs> Good job up front by the Skyhawk defense shutting that down. So, yeah, you, you got to be impressed right now. Scott is attempting, and they've got to this drive really get tough defensively because Winfield's had their way to this point in time. Clock ticking 2.50 here, third and five. Ball at the 27. Brown with the handoff, and he's going to give it to his man, Beam. Boggs is going to continue to keep carrying, and guys. And he's got a handful of that wire yep. in front of the helmet there. I think everybody saw that one right there. Face mask as plain as day. It's going to give him a first down, that's for sure. And Scott self-destructing. Probably would have been a first down anyway, but they handed it to him on the penalty. Face mask, 15-yard variety there. And speaking of penalties, we haven't talked about this much. You get into a, a tight contest like this, penalties a lot of times will make the difference. Ask the University of Alabama two weeks ago. <laughs> Coach Goodwin <laughs> almost wore my Tennessee Coach Doug's <laughs> Barstool shirt for you tonight. A little cold, though, for that. Though. So you see the call there. The face mask against Scott. Yeah, and you know, th and the thing about it is, like a penalty like that, of course it's not intentional, but you're 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 fighting as hard as you can, and you're you're holding them down, and then, boom, it gives them. Co Coach, go. Let me ask you on, on on that type of penalty. There is that an effort or or a mental mistake on that type of face mask? Are you're not in the right position, or is it or is that more of an effort penalty? That, Actually, that right a there? little bit of both, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're here inside the ten. First and goal. Brown's going to take it himself, and he's going to continue to churn and inside. Got some more laundry flying out Coach, there. Coach Good, well, I was going to say that these teams here, you know, being in the top five, don't get penalized as much. They're good football right. teams to this point early in the first quarter, and now we've seen flags flying on consecutive plays. And, uh, you know, I, I, and I'm, I'm a firm believer that emotion goes into a lot of that, you know, and uh, – you, you just got to keep yourself in check. And, it's, you know, it's a really funny thing because you try to get your guys fired up and go after them and, and fight like warriors and stuff. And then when something like that goes wrong where you're trying so hard, it's frustrating. Absolutely. And that's, that's when you have to uh, be able to, you know, keep control of yourself. Like you talk about the ebb and the flow. Sure, to, absolutely. To, to be a part and kind of figure out the adjustment. And so the yep. chop block penalty on Winfield and that's going to back them up a good bit here. And that's when you're, you're telling the – you guys telling the players, Winfield right now, hey, that one's a gone. Let's go. Let's move on. You know, it's this, easier said than done. This penalty on Winfield may be a little more dramatic than it would be on Scott because they like to run the football because yep, now you yep. got a first down sure. and essentially goal from inside only the 25-yard line. And so the handoff there, number 13 on the carry, nice little run by K. John Pearson. Trying to get around that corner. Did a pretty good job. Picked him up a good good chunk of yardage there, making it a more manageable situation. And I'll tell you another thing that, that's good, and I've, I'm not trying to tell Coach Smolder what to do, but if you get in the unbalanced stuff like that where you have, you know, a bunch of guys to one side, like the uh, short side of the field toward the boundary here right now, and then try to throw a pass out from the weak side, a little play action, it can open up a lot of stuff for you. Worked the last time. So Boggs went in motion, attempted to make Scott again show their hand. 120 in ticking. We've got some whistles on the field. Timeout from Winfield. And so we'll, and so we'll take it with them. 
Got some sponsorships here to talk to you about. Frontier Communications providing tonight's production for this broadcast via the Media Center. We also would like to thank West Virginia Coal Association. Still coal keeps the stadium lights on. We'd like to thank West Virginia Coal Association. Also, Martin Transport joining our team of professional drivers today. They've got the best pay and benefits around. Learn more about Martin Transport at driveformartintransport.com. Again, that is driveformartintransport.com. So, Coach Goebel, we're sitting here. Scott, a little on the ropes at this point in time. What is Coach Dolan trying to get out of his team right now? Trying to slow him down, trying to let him settle in. Yeah, you know, and uh, and I'm I'm a firm believer when you if you start having some mental mistake stuff, you need to call time out and just look him in the eye and say, hey, we're all right. It, it's it's not the end of the world. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, and get him settled down a little bit. Get him refocused. Boggs is going to take the end around. He's going to keep turning his legs. Nice carry there. Nice job on the counter. Ray Boggs. Had the deception. Defense flowing to the fake handoff to the right, and then they countered back the other way. Very nice carry by Boggs. Good design by Winfield and Coach Smolder. Gain of six there from Boggs. And so now a big time third and goal here. Is this four down territory if you're Winfield? Or you think about kicking the three? I mean, I don't know. We saw the extra point. But you're within range. Uh, your points, right? Yeah, I mean, that's that's another tough call if you want to think about. Maybe they won't have to worry about a Coach Goble here after this third down play. I'd be surprised we didn't see a pass right here. Send him in motion. Boggs. Brown back to pass. Brown's going to get her out of one guy, and he's going to fling it down. It's going to bounce, though. Was not able to hit the intended receiver there. K. John Pearson. Now we have a fourth down. Great call by Scott dialing up the blitz on that. I think they were thinking the same thing I was. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, a third down and ten situation. Not that I make great calls all the time. I'm just saying. You, <laughs> thinking you, know, the same you thing. also, though, Coach Gilby, you said it could have been the pass, but also at the same time, if you know you're going to go for it on fourth, maybe it get it cut in half. Right, absolutely. Especially with a running team. Uh -huh. So you took a chance there on that blitz, but also run blitz works as well. 25 seconds here, first quarter, big play. Fourth and goal from the 10. Brown out of the shotgun. Boggs beside him. And he's going to be hit as he throws. Down. Didn't even get the throw off. Number 52. Big. Big time sack there by Ty the sophomore Ty Mitchell. Six foot, 200 pound linebacker and sophomore. And he came unblocked from the outside. And Brown had nowhere to go with the football and took a big shot. Great game planning there by the Skyhawk defense on that. I assume that's what it was. Or either that or you just had a blown assignment on your protection there. Mitchell's fourth sack of the season, Coach Goble. And he definitely came around there and laid the wood on that one. So now Scott's got to feel like, hey, we dodged a bullet. And they're going to pitch it on the outside. Brian Gear. Continue to churn those legs and get on out to about the 27-yard line. Easily a first down carry there. And the other thing that we were talking about earlier that's oh, no, making this so much fun to watch is they're not going to back down by any means. No. These guys have not lost a game. Okay, things aren't going too well right now. Well, look, we're only down one one score. Let's take it to them. Let's go. You know. Absolutely. And I believe we're going to get a measurement here, Coach Goble. Although maybe not, maybe the uh, the spot they move they move the, maybe the yard marker line, back sideline warning maybe no nope. no they are gonna they are actually gonna measure here a lot of a lot of uh, bodies down there in camo made it real tough to see where the ball was for us <laughs> coach. <right>. <laughs> So here comes the measurement. I wonder if the camo is good enough where you can go out there and, like, play defense with 12 guys instead of 11. They might be able to catch him. It is a first down. My eyes did not deceive him, Coach Go. It is a first down. And so and you, Scott with their first first down of the game. You can watch their body language. They're not shaking up too badly about anything so far. You know, they're working together, and uh, they're going to keep coming at you, which is what's making this fun. Number one team in the state's not going to go down without a fight. That's, that is one thing we know without a shadow of a doubt. 
And so Scott on the ball, ready to go. Offensive line not up there, though. They're having a conversation with the official. And you know what's interesting about this to me, too, one reason I was so excited that I got to call this game tonight is, you know, the, both of these teams, besides Hurricane for Winfield, it's the two best teams they've played. Brian Gear came in motion and took the carry, did not get anything at all on that play. Great job reading up and getting up there and shutting that down on the edge. Your boy Jackson Cunningham there, Coach Go made an outstanding play. Brian Gear was trying to get in space and was not able to do so. Great pursuit. Yes, he, he Jackson can get after you. And so that is our first quarter of play here. We're going to head to the second quarter with our score. Winfield, seven, Scott, zero. We'll take a break. You're watching Friday Night Football presented by Parmar here on RSN. Make sure you are informed. With HD Media, we are leading the state in local, digital, and print media. We are storytellers. We focus on education, health, entertainment, politics, opinions, sports, and the outdoors. Through our websites, print, or social and mobile apps. We work every day to enhance the lives of our customers by informing, entertaining, and empowering our readers in the communities we serve. We are HD Media. Call State Farm agent Matthew Rousey at 304-925-8000 today. And we, are, and we are back, about to start our second quarter of action. Winfield High School down on the Canal River. Top five matchup. Scott, number one, coming in here to invade Winfield, but the Generals have stood strong here early. Seven-nothing lead. They just introduced the Winfield Championship Middle School team, got a big rise out of the crowd. Now we're back to action here. Fry's going to pass. And his first completion of the game there to Brian Guard on the outside. Big, big first down there. And guess what happened there? They they ran the blitz. Through hot. The receiver adjusted across the middle of the field. And boom. There you go. Very, very nice play there for Scott. Feels like they're getting in a little bit of a rhythm there. They've seen what Winfield's throwing at them. Now they're adjusting the ebb and the flow like you talk about, Coach Goble. Scott's offense way too powerful for Winfield to shut down. For two yeah, long. you know, and, and like I said, it's, it's pound the ground uh, versus quick strike. You know, Winfield can take a whole quarter to score, but Scott can come back in a couple plays and score. Fry yeah, with, the, look at that. With, with the fake to Cooper and a first down toss on the outside. Nice little RPO type action on yes, the slant there. Very nice move by Braden Clark, the 6'2", 145-pound sophomore. Got up the field after he caught the football. And well also, done by Scott. Also in the trenches, keep your eye on number 72, Caden Clemens, the six foot three, 252-pound uh, senior playing left tackle. He is uh, doing a great job in there. There's a reason they've only allowed six sacks this year. Exactly Coach right. Goble. Left tackle protecting that blind side for Fry as much as he likes to throw. Shotgun snap by Fry. He's going to hand it to Brian Guard. Nice little motion action there. Pick up of about... Seven on the play there. That's a nice long trap. And what we say, long trap and short trap, well, duh, long means long, short <laughs> means short. But uh, if you go long trap like that, normally when you pull the guard and trap right on the other side of the center, which is a quick trap or short trap, that was a long trap where they're blocking down and the guard was going all the way out blocking the defensive end. Makes a little bit bigger hole, gives them some wiggle room, can cut up through there. Good job. They're going with five, Coach Goble on that run there. And Cooper will take the handoff here and he's gonna dance a little bit to the outside. Not much on that, that carry at all. That was the old Redskins counter trade to the left that time to no avail. At this point in time, Scott trying to keep Winfield off balance. A lot of runs with Cooper. Obviously that's their offense as well. You don't want to abandon that at this point in time. And plus the ability to run the football with Cooper is gonna slow down that pressure on the outside that Winfield's been bringing all night to this point early. In the screen early last time, too, when they didn't catch it. Right. I think also kind of maybe made Coach Smolder think a little bit. And Winfield's defensive line is coached very well. They are being able to read and recognize, you know, what's going on if they're pulling or whatever. You know, like to mention, one of the assistant coaches at Winfield High School is Chris Massey. The Chris Massey. 
Okay, all right. Yeah, who, who was an All-American uh, long snapper at Marshall University and a fullback. Played for the Rams for a played long time for the Rams, in the league. And that, that young man, uh, in all the years he played in the NFL, I think it was seven or eight seasons, never had a bad snap one time. Impressive. Impressive. And uh, what's, what's really wild, I met him when he was just a youngster. His older brother, Brian, played quarterback for me at West Virginia Tech. Wow. And Chris used to come up with just a little whippersnapper. Was he you know? practicing snapping back then, Coach Cope? I don't really recall. <laughs> He's probably just running around, you know, like kids doing, trying to get a corn dog or something. But, right, uh, right. Throw a little mustard on that yeah, corn dog. But, uh, he, uh, uh, he brings so much knowledge to Winfield's staff, you know. Been there, done that, yeah. Absolutely. A guy who's been in the league can only help, and especially the experience with Marshall. Heard you guys talking on Tailgate Show this week that Coach Miller had the Bobby Pruitt come down here and talk to the Generals. That's sure a guy did. who knows how to play for championships, there that's you for go. sure. And the Montre had huge third down and five here coming for Scott. They're going to hide it to Brian Gard, and Brian Gard is going to get up inside for about three. Believe it's fourth down, four down territory here if you're Scott. Down seven, nothing. Although you could pin Winfield deep here. Make that offense have to go the length of the field. But the way people are going these days, we all like to score points, Coach. Go. They're going to go for it. We know it. Fourth and three coming. Well, I think in this situation right here, if it were me, I would punt it. But what are you You're know? old school, though, Coach. Yeah, that's right. You know. I think I might too as well, but Scott's got that number one offense. Well, watch this too. They may they may go bark at him here, try to get a quick count, make him jump. Brian Gear got the play from the sideline. He's going to fake it to him, and Fry's going to throw. He's going to get around the outside, and he's going to get in a hurdle as well. Oh. Flag thrown, though. Did, n did not at all like the reaction there from Fry on the end of that play. Yeah, I believe he, he knows something. it's yeah. coming back. We'll see what the penalty nice, is there, though. Nice play there. They've run the counter tray. Once again, pulling the guard and the tackle both and handed it to the right-hand side and to the left-hand side. That time, faked the counter tray to the right, and the quarterback kept it. And here comes the call, and it is a holding. Holding. It was in the air, the Coach Govel. You know what they like to say. Now, now see, the official there said the guy's number, but I'm not going to repeat it again. I'm not going to get in trouble anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no reason for it. We'll, yeah, we'll you know, keep you out of trouble, Coach Gale. Yeah, please, Mom and Dads, don't bother me this week. I'm trying to be good. You, we, <laughs> we, we know your propensity for it, so, you know, we'll try and keep you out of trouble here. Yeah. Spot foul, though, so it did not bring him back nearly as far. Look at Fourth this. and three wow. all over again. 927 second quarter here. Number one, Scott going to go for it on fourth down. Fry the shotgun snap. He's going to it, hand it to Brian Garn. Wow. I don't, I don't believe he got done. that. That's Going to be about a yard short, it looks like, here on the far side. According to the uh, linesman here coming in, waving his arms. Sure, looks like Brian Gear did not get it. And Winfield's defense stands tall, makes a big play. Scott's first driver, they really had some momentum in moving the football. Guess who was jamming that up? Jackson, Jackson. Cunningham. <laughs> he seems to be in the middle of everything for the Generals down there. He yeah. is not able to hide with the camera. There I was go. coaching at uh, West Virginia Tech when Jackson's dad was playing at Winfield and uh, Rob, and I wanted him so bad I'd come and see him all the time. And finally, after a couple, about a month or so, he said, Coach, I love you and I like to play for you, but I'm going to have a chance to go to Marshall. And I said, <laughs> I understand, man. All right. And we've been friends ever since. Sometimes you know that you're not going to win that recruiting war, right, Coach? Go. Mm -hmm. Go, go focus the efforts elsewhere. Hope this defensive end's not offsides here. Sure looks like he might be from our angle here. And so Brown sends his man in motion. They're going to get up in the Quick middle there. Quick trap there, quarterback keeper. Not a lot there for Brown, but a good little game. About four. Second down and a long. In their modus operandi, they'll be. Long six, short seven. <laughs> They, they would be happy as a pig in mud just to drive this thing down here and put another one on the board right yep. before the halftime. You, you know, you could average four yards of play and take the entire clock here yep. if you Winfield. That probably would be Coach Schmolder's ideal drive here. Brown under center. Brings his man in motion, and he's going to hand it off to Beam. Beam going to continue to roll. The ball came loose, and I do not think – I do. They are going to say Scott did come away with it on the Winfield sideline. What a Whoa, recovery man. there. Unbelievable play. 
by David Finnessy, the sophomore. What a play by David Finnessy. Unbelievable young man making a big time play right there. <laughs> 830 well, now in like, county. I'd like to say hello to my other broadcasting partner, Brian Nost. He's sending me some messages here. And uh, it's good hearing from you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> that Brian's here listening. Yeah. Watching this game on RSN with us tonight. Top five matchup in double A. While we have a quick second, we'd like to tell you about Mullins Plumbing and Heating, a proud partner of game day. Contact us today for a free consultation. And Scott's back on the field. Fry out of the gun. Going to throw it to the outside of Brian Gear. Not a lot. Man, I'll tell you what, Winfield does a great job of getting downhill really fast on that stuff outside. Good pursuit to the football. They've got all the hats flying there, Coach Cove, that's for sure. And that's been one of Scott's big things, getting it, throwing that ball out there to those guys on the edge for those quick screens. And the, you know how that is. That, uh, that can open up a lot of stuff. You've got some guys that can run. Yeah, Brian Gear and Clark have really had some, some good plays there on the outside. And Preston Cooper has not been a factor to this point in time. Second and nine coming. Bring him in motion does Brian Gear. Option look there for Fry, and he pitches it to the outside. Going to continue to dance. Winfield's going to bring him down. Now, right there's an example of a well-coached team as well. Winfield smothered over there. They all pursued, got on the running back, and when they got to the sideline, what did they do? They, they all broke off. down. Yeah, and they backed off and didn't try to be Mr. Hero and blast him into the bleachers. Allow the numbers to get there. Yes. Loss of four on that play. Good little play design, though, I thought, from oh, yeah. Scott. Maybe you come back to that yeah, both, later on. Yeah, as I said earlier, both teams are well coached. They both have really good composure. You would think, though, here for Scott, you'll want to get some points off this drive. Getting the turnover like you did, you want to take advantage of it. Fry out of the shotgun. Fakes it to his running back. Cooper going to fling it down the field. Just out of the reach of his six-foot target, Isaiah Bush. There, and uh, that's one of his favorite targets. And, and uh, you'll notice what's going on. They're playing uh, a man-free defense there. And they're all man-to-man -man up. And then they have that one uh, free safety running around back there, uh, jumping on whoever he wants, going deep. And every time they've thrown the ball, they've been double covered. Good. Yeah, they, not a lot. Not a lot at all in terms of separation from the Scott receivers to this point. Bush averages 27 yards a catch. They love to get him deep down the field. Have not been able to do so yet to this point in time in the game. So Scott will punt again, their third punt of the game. And that one's going to take a bounce inside the 35. Going to keep trickling right to the 30. That's where Scott will kill it. And it will also kill our second quarter clock. 6.46 to go. <laughs> Winfield with that 7 nothing lead here on the Skyhawks. While we have a minute here, we'd like to remind you about another message from one of our sponsors, United Bank. United Bank is a proud partner of HD Media High School Game Day. For all your personal business financial needs, go with United and go to West Virginia's Bank at bankwithunited.com. West Virginia's Bank at bankwithunited.com. I've also heard they're United with the Mountaineers too. Coach Absolutely. Go, right, right. So Winfield's going to get the football back here at the 30. Brown under center. He's going to hand it to Boggs, and Boggs is going to go. He's across to the 40. Brian Gear actually was able to get back there with him, but he made a miss. Touchdown, Winfield. What a run by Bray Boggs. He had open grass from the get-go, Coach Goble. Tremendous and a dish. nice play on the far sideline there, making Brian Gear kind of miss. And he made one of them miss, and before that, when he went through the line, they had the counter action. When they went through the line, Scott was blitzing a guy, and he literally ran right past the running back and missed him. That's the danger of, of running those run blitzes sometimes if you shoot the gap you and live, it goes to the live, other one. Uh-oh. Live and die with it. Yes, sir. Winfield now. Got to feel like with this 13-0 lead, they're hoping to make it 14 with the extra point from Hernandez. Feeling really good. And the extra point is going to be no good there. I was really surprised that one wasn't blocked. They were right on top oh, of that one. Absolutely got back there in a hurry. And so we'll take ourselves a break. Our score 
Winfield 13. Scott Zero, you're listening and watching here. High School Game Day presented by HD Media on RSN. Buying a car is easier than ever. We're introducing the area's only personal shopper to help you find the perfect ride. This no pressure team can help you find the vehicle in your budget, appraise your trade, work out payments, even pick out a vehicle that fits your needs and send you all the information. You can have the car delivered to your house or choose our fast pass delivery and we'll have everything ready for you to pick up your new car quickly. Tell us exactly what you're looking for, your payment range and terms, and let us find the best options for you. Just go to TajiFlor.com and see for yourself. Turnover. And we are back here, 631 in the second quarter. Top five matchup between the number one Scott Skyhawks, the visitors from Boone County, and the number five Winfield Generals. Winfield looking to move on up in these double A rankings, Coach Go. Well, they're number five. A win over number one. You might be having a few games here at Winfield High School yeah. Stadium yes, sir. on the way to Wheeling. And you never know, these two may meet again. Yeah, could. You never know how the bracket might shake out, but this, we could be having a little preview. I'm glad you guys are watching this with us because it's been a great game so far. And the kick is going to be fielded by the Skyhawks at the 35. Not going to get much, but out to about the 41-yard line there. I haven't had this much fun since the buy one, get one at the Dairy Queen last week. <laughs> You're telling me, Coach Go, well, about the uh, – the, the, the Dairy Queen right down here, just a short drive from us here now. Legendary. Now, hey, the only other one that I'd have to put up against it. Have you ever been in the one hitting before? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that. that. Yeah. I, as a matter of fact, isn't that the oldest Dairy Queen? Yes, and it's yeah. right there on right there on the river down there. Uh, oh, that's the best. Yeah. Got a good buddy of mine listening tonight, Mark Basham, who is uh, from that part and made sure that I got to the hitting Dairy Queen. <laughs> so, you guys, Dairy Queen. There we go. No free ads here. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Yeah, exactly. And Fry's going to take the shotgun snap. And he looks to throw. Incomplete. Wasn't able to hit his that man was, uh, there. Had the right idea there. He ran the first guy outside deep and, and had him on the crossing route underneath. And was replacing the guy once again. That's the one they hit earlier across the middle there. Absolutely. Got the big gain on it. Yeah, Hennessy wasn't able to stop on a dime there and make that play. Fry's... A, looks a little rattled to this point in time. Winfield getting a lot of heat to this point in time on him, and it's it's made him a little erratic with the throws. A 60% passer coming in. He's going to throw that one to the outside there. Nice gain. That was essentially the same thing we were just talking about. He came from the other side underneath that time. Jaden Sharps on the on, on the catch there, the 6'1", 170-pound senior, and, and making a nice little catch on the out route there. And they may find out now if they – if they uh, and it looks like they're trying to shorten the routes and get a little combination pressure on the defense to be able to complete shorter passes and still move the ball down the field. More like an extension of the run game here for right. Scott at this right. point in time. They haven't been able to run the ball great. Let's get it out of Fry's hands quickly. That pass rush yeah, don't allow it to be something that really puts you yeah, at just, a disadvantage. Just about every pass has been deep. Third and four here. And the handoff. Fake the handoff to Cooper. Fry on the outside. Continue to try and get makes guys miss, and he is not going to get anywhere. Pushed out of bounds. Now look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven generals around the football. Everybody was flying to the football there yeah, for generals. They, they were well coached on that defense. They were they – were, uh, like you say, high-speed pursuit. Yes, they were. <laughs> Absolutely, the high-speed high high like, pursuit was led by Nico Petrozelli there. Just like well done. Sherrod Buford T. Justice, high-speed pursuit. Coach Gilby, you're dating me a little bit there on that <laughs> reference there. I'm only 30. <laughs> so it's fourth and, fourth and four here. Well, some of the – Scott, another punt coming back. They've been close to man, getting it. I'm telling you. Wow. Oh. oh, my goodness. Pancake here at midfield. Didn't look like there's any penalty flags flying, though. Good I was mentioning hit. during the timeout how close they have come to blocking a couple of these punts. And, uh, you know, it comes down to it, that may be a game changer. Absolutely. And it sure looked like they were going to get that one as well. Sure. A lot of heat on Scott's, on Scott's punter to this point in time. And four punts already for Scott, probably more than they've almost punted all season. I've, I've got the, the stats here. And Scott – on the season, had punted nine times coming into this game. Wow. Clemens had. He's already punted four times tonight. And so Winfield has the ball starting at the 42, bringing K. K John Pearson in motion. 
Trying to give him a little bit of a look. They're in that balanced double wing once again where they can uh, attack either side. Might see the big man carrying the mail here on this one. Brown will bring Pearson in motion, and you called it, Coach Gobel. Beam with a head of steam. Continues to just carry Skyhawks with him. Nice little gain from Beam. Gain of five yards. And they continue to have that clock churn here in this second quarter. Winfield, you got to feel like Coach Gilbert, I know you talked about it last time of an eight minute drive, but now maybe more realistic to get that five minute drive. You always right. take the home run though, obviously sure. from Boggs. But now, moving the ball close to midfield, time tick and Scott really needs to get it back for their offense. So Brown will keep it. Not much on that one. Gave about three, and so we're gonna have a third and two coming for the Generals. Coach Gobel, it looks like Winfield's just kind of leaning on him right now at this point in time. If you're Scott, obviously when to get this stop, get the ball back, put some points on the board, but you almost just kind of want to get the locker room to regroup, recoup, yeah. kind of settle yourself down here because Winfield's had the better of you in the opening. Well, one, thing, one thing you think about, though, an offense like Scott that scores quickly a lot of times, you think the defense would be used to being on the field. Yeah. Not to this point. Brown's going to take it. He's going to get himself a first down. Well, well done by Brown. Nice. <laughs> nice read on the play. That always cracks me up when guys say, well, the uh, defense has been on the field all day. Well, guess what? The offense <laughs> has too. I mean, That's what right. does that mean? You know? I never could figure that one out. The time of possession, <laughs> Coach Goble, you know. Four minutes now. The clock stopped, and now it starts back again after the first down carry from Brown. Ball sits at the 45 of Scott. Winfield has it. no problem running this play clock down. Inside of 10, pretty much every play habitually. Brown sends his man in motion. He's going to hand it to Caden Beam. No, he doesn't hand it to Caden Beam. Caden Beam handed it to Boggs. Had me deceptive there on the outside. Nice nice fake, and Boggs is going to get himself a first down. Now, this is where, this is where you really have to uh, keep your players' minds right if you're on defense. Because we're getting one of those methodical drives now, and, and psychologically, you know, it's hut, bang, hut, bang, and they're just pounding, bang, 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 right down the field. And uh, it's it's tough on the defense, and they start, I'm telling you right now, they start chomping on that run a little bit too much. It might cause them a problem with a pass. On a, even on that play there, hand it to Beam, and he's going to continue to just fall forward. Huge carry for Beam. About eight yards on that play. And I was going to say, Coach Go, was they, they were worried about the inside run. Then they get the big outside carry there with, with Boggs right. for the first down. Now you hit them back on the inside with Beam. Scott not able to really figure out yet how to solidify that rush defense. They key on one thing, they go to the other thing. Yeah. Been that way all drive. Sure. And they still have that pass in their back pocket to hit them with. Already threw a touchdown pass in the game. Hands it to Boggs. Easy first down tote there, exploding and through that line. Nice, nice lead block by Beam right there. Got it. Got to give the Winfield offensive line a lot of credit. Ingram, Howe, Cunningham, Huffman, and Arthur. They've been creating some big holes up there, an all-senior group. And you know one thing that resonated with me when we talked to to uh, Coach Smolder on our tailgate show the other night was. He he attributes their success to how all the seniors bought in and wanted to succeed. And you can tell they're they're doing a great job. Absolutely. Coach Smolder, not, not too long in his tenure here. Hands that one to Beam, and he continues to just carry Scott Skyhawks. And now they're getting tired of uh, seeing this guy, you know. He's continuing to pound on him, Coach Kobe, like like you talked about. Yep. You don't want to see him. Let's see. Who gets the ball first? I don't remember the second half. I believe it'll be I, – I can't 100% remember Coach Kobe, but I believe the ball will go – back to Winfield yeah. to start the half. Well, if they get a score here and come back out and drive another one, it's going to be difficult. Real difficult. They're going to hand that one off there to Boggs. Good job hunkering down by the defense right there. This is this could be one of the most crucial drives of the game here yes. for Scott. If, if you go down 20 nothing, I don't care how explosive your offense is, it's going to be tough sledding, especially with the way Winfield runs the football and can just chew that clock. We're going to have a timeout here on the field. And we have a timeout. And while we, while they take that timeout, you'll take a timeout as well. You're watching 
High School Game Day presented by Parmar HD Media on RSN. We'll come back. Winter is coming. It's time to remember Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. With cooler days ahead, now is the time to call Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling and schedule your heating system tune-up. Our experienced technicians will provide you peace of mind with our comprehensive 15-point system service. The Mullen Heating System Service and Safety Inspection will ensure you aren't left in the cold this winter. Remember, Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Call and schedule your tune-up today or visit us online at mullenplumbing.com. So we're back here. Coach Gove was talking to me during the break. You were giving me the inside. Let's let's give it to the folks here. Talking about how good Winfield's looked offensively yeah. here in the opening half. You know, they're doing what they do best. Is they drive it down your throat and then play good defense. In the eye formation here, first time we've seen that look. Fake from Brown. Going to try and ride his guard into the end zone. Not quite, though. Wasn't able to get all the way into the end zone there on the keeper. Nice backside pursuit once again by Ty Mitchell. Mitchell's, young, Mitchell's young, making some plays there for Scott. That young man's been all over the field tonight. Six foot, 202 pound sophomore. Kid who you would imagine might have a future playing some college football there, yeah. Coach Goble. Third and goal coming here for the Generals. Bringing Boggs in motion. Under a minute in the first quarter, or in the, in the first half, excuse me. Clock winding down, 10 seconds on the play clock. Neither team appearing to be in much of a rush there. Hands it off. And it does not appear that we're going to get ourselves a, a touchdown. Scott, wow. able out, Scott able to just string them out just enough. Kudos to the Skyhawks, buddy. They're, they're uh, bearing down here. They're wanting to shut this down. And a timeout called by Winfield with 34 seconds to go here. Why in, not? in the first half. Yeah, and it, absolutely, right, if you're, if you're Winfield. Real quickly, while we have a second coach go, we're going to talk about Summit Community Bank, a Forbes magazine, best in West Virginia bank. You can find out more at mysummit.bank. And also, Kalaski Orthodontics. For all your cosmetic and medical dental care needs, contact aperfectsmile.com. That is aperfectsmile.com for Kalaski Orthodontics. Fourth down for the Generals. Dominated the entire first half. Only up 13 nothing. Yeah, I mean, and the thing I keep thinking in the back of my mind, when you got the second best quarterback in the state of West Virginia, you can put one on the board really fast if he has enough time or if he hits the right guy, you know. And I, I think um, right now it's anybody's game. And what – and the – played some great defense right now too they, they, they've answered the bell here defensively this is going to be the play of the half here for Scott if they can hunker down and make this thing happen would be huge for him going to send Boggs in motion they're going to give it to Boggs on the outside and it looks like he is going to get in the end zone for a touchdown patient continued to pick his hole and he found it for the generals touchdown and now Winfield's got to be feeling real real good coach Goble yep 19 to nothing, Winfield here. Great drive, great clock burner, and once again, they are playing some defense. That's what you called for. Yeah, yeah, sure. Give it back to the offense and burn that clock. And they're applying their philosophy exactly how they like to do it, you know. Appears that they are going to go for two here. They're trying to get to that football number of 21. Brown is going to be in the shotgun. Boggs beside him, offset. Out of the gun. Takes the shotgun snap, and he's going to throw it. Bounced it into the receiver. Was not able to make the catch <laughs> there. So we're going to take a break here. You'll come on back and watch the last 28 seconds with us in the first half. Our score, Winfield 19. Scott Zero, you're listening and watching RSN. Presented by HD Media, the high school game of the week.
And we are back. You hear the famous trumpets playing. They're pumped here at Winfield. Top five matchup in double A. And the number one team in double A, the visitors from Scott Sky, Hawks. They're in trouble, Coach Goble. Winfield yes. has put it on yes, them they are. in the opening half. And I think they're kind of shell-shocked, you know, because they haven't been in this situation before. The war zone, the camo, Winfield had all the emotion, and they have taken it to him. Been a great half from Bray Boggs. Aiden Hernandez will kick it off for the Generals. He'll boot it, squib. Brian Gear's going to take it, and he's going to take it inside to the 38-yard line. Nice little pop there. Nice little return. Brian Gear has himself a little extra gear, Coach Goble. Gets shot out of a cannon. If Scott's going to have a chance in the second half, I think he's going to be the guy that's going to have sure. to happen. And, uh, you know, we haven't uh, mentioned it too much also. You always have to remember there's always a chance to make a big impact with a special teams play. A lot of people overlook that. You know, that's a third of your game. You got to be good in all three phases, right, yeah, Coach? Go sure. Trips. We've got the stack going on over here. Fry's going to throw it to his man that's on the other side of the field there. And a nice, nice catch. Nice job. Isaiah right. Bush with three reception. Three receivers to the right. Gave Isaiah Bush room to work there on that single coverage on the other side of the field. you got to imagine if you're Scott, you're going to try and see a lot more of that in the second half. You need to get your yeah. athletes manned up against Winfield. Yeah, I, I, I would would really be surprised if they didn't come out and kind of like just run a two-minute offense the entire half, second both, half. Both times that they've got man-on-man -man and got it out quick, it's been good plays for Scott. Fry's going to roll out, continuing to throw, and he is going to find his man across the 40-yard line. Going to get out of bounds. Nicely done by number one there for Scott. Braden Clark. Braden Clark making the catch. And so you got one chance here. You can chuck it as far as you can here if you're fry. Going to be about a 39-yard toss into the end zone. Winfield lining up, dropping everybody but their grandmother into the secondary. Two receivers to each side. Fry will throw it up. And it's going to be incomplete. Attempted to find his man, Isaiah Bush. And that will end our first half with our score. The number five, Winfield Generals, 19. The number one, Scott Skyhawks, zero. Come on back. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the rest of the, of the high school landscape here in West Virginia. You're watching High School Football Game Day presented by Parmar and HD Media here on RSN. The son and grandson of coal miners, Mike Stewart, has a record of fighting for us. President Trump's pick for U.S. Attorney, Stewart fought drugs, crime, and corruption. Mike Stewart will fight for better jobs, lower inflation, and your values. I'm Mike Stewart, a conservative, not a politician. My opponent, another Biden liberal. He votes their values. I'll vote yours. Mike Stewart, a strong new leader for the state Senate. Ball Toyota is here for you. Gas prices got you down? Toyota has a hybrid for everyone. Like the 53 MPG Corolla or Camry, the 58 MPG Prius, the 41 MPG RAV4, the 40 MPG Venza, and the 36 MPG Highlander. Need more room or want to haul a trailer or boat? Get the new 22 MPG Tundra Hybrid. Give your new Toyota the protection it deserves with a genuine Toyota service contract. Visit BallToyota.com. Ball Toyota of Charleston. It's a whole new ball game. Call State Farm Agent Matthew Rousey at 304-925-8000 today.
The son and grandson of coal miners, Mike Stewart has a record of fighting for us. President Trump's pick for U.S. Attorney, Stewart fought drugs, crime, and corruption. Mike Stewart will fight for better jobs, lower inflation, and your values. I'm Mike Stewart, a conservative, not a politician. My opponent, another Biden liberal. He votes their values. I'll vote yours. Mike Stewart, a strong new leader for the state Senate. Hi, I'm West Virginia State Senator Eric J. Tarr, and I chair the Committee on Finance for the State Senate in West Virginia. I'm asking you to vote yes on Amendment 2. Without passing Amendment 2, the tax on your cars and trucks is here to stay. If you pass Amendment 2, we can eliminate the tax on your cars and trucks and vehicles that you depend on every day. Vote yes on Amendment 2. It gives the legislature a lot more flexibility on how we can restructure taxes in West Virginia so you keep more money in your pocket.
but the raven, sitting lonely on a placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word. I'm West Virginia State we Senator Jay Tarr, and I chaired the Committee on Finance for the State Senate where in West we've Virginia. Been. I'm asking you to vote and yes on Amendment 2. Going. Without passing Amendment 2, health care is ever-changing, and we are evolving to meet the future needs of our community. Thomas Health is honored to announce our affiliation with the WVU Health System. WVU Health System and its network of hospitals and physicians across West Virginia Ohio and Pennsylvania will allow Thomas Health to elevate and expand the current services we offer to this region.
with broader access to specialists and subspecialists and the full support of the preeminent health system in our state, we look forward to being your first choice for medical care. Together, proudly serving our community and the state of West Virginia today and tomorrow. August 5th, 2013 was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. It turned into a nightmare. Harmony was too big for me to pass through my pelvis. They thought the best option was to put the vacuum on her. She begged for a C-section over and over and over. They wanted to rush through it. Once Harmony came out, she was, it probably wasn't five minutes. They rushed her to NIC unit and then her head swelled the size of a watermelon. It pretty much crushed her whole skull. Ben Salingo was recommended to us by a family friend that he had represented. Having Ben Salingo on our side changed everything for the better. From day one, he did everything for us. He kept in touch with us pretty much on a daily basis to let us know what was going on and even just to check on us. It gave us closure as a family, a peace, a calming feeling over us that she can rest in peace. Parmar, Friday night, lights here, presented by HD Media and RSN. We're at halftime, getting ready to get it revved up here in the second half. Top five matchup between Scott and Winfield. Number five generals up 19-0 at halftime. I want to give you a quick little whip around the scoreboard here in AAA tonight. Huntington with a 28-0 lead on St. Albans, the Highlanders number one in the state, doing work there against the Red Dragons. Number two, Hurricane, up 21-0 on South Charleston. They are approaching halftime as well. Wheeling Park, number seven, Wheeling Park. At Parkersburg South here, the number two ranked Parkersburg South Crusaders in a 21-18 lead there for Wheeling Park over the Patriots. Bridgeport and Musselman in action there. Another top ten matchup at AAA. The Indians, number nine, with a 28-21 lead on the Musselman Appleman there as they approach halftime. Capital and GW playing the, at Laley. 7 to nothing. GW, the number six ranked Patriots, lead the Cougars 7 0. Spring Valley, Parkersburg, no score in from that one. At halftime in Princeton, the number 10th ranked Tigers are up on Greenbrier East 34 to 12. Number 13, Jefferson up on Hedgesville 18 to 7. And down in down in the Fayette County area there, Woodrow Wilson. Traveling to Oak Hill, number 15 versus number 16. Big matchup there for playoff implications. Woodrow 21 to 7 at the half. And you hear the trumpets playing. Going to give you a little bit more here in double A before we get going, especially because these teams are so involved in that race. Roan County, number 2, up 36 to 6. Independence up 32 to nothing over Wyoming East. Wheeling Central playing Berkeley Springs. And we have a no score on that one. Frankfurt, number six, Frankfurt in North Marion. Number four versus number six, Frankfurt, number six, up 21 to eight. Fairmont Senior, number eight in, in the double A, up 42 to 13. And Coach Goble, we're back here. Scott has to kick it off. What did they say at the halftime locker room? Nice nice kick there, by the way, well, from I'm, Scott. I'm, I'm sure Winfield says, let's just keep doing what we're doing. Boggs with a nice return and there. I, I, think, I think this drive by the Winfield offense will be a measurement and, and tell a lot about what's going on here for the second half. Absolutely. Green with a nice boot there for Scott. Good return by Boggs. Got it out just ahead of the 30-yard line to the 32. And like you said, Coach Goble, this is the drive where Winfield can really put their throat, kind of kind of rip it out yep. there of Scott. And so Brown Brings Boggs in motion. And gets the play back from the sideline. Has to be confusing for Scott, though, every time he does that. you got to feel like he's getting ready to roll, and then he got to reset. You know, another thing that's surprising about that, too, is that the Scott uh, defensive line hasn't done real uh, – has done a very good job of not jumping when that happens. You know, that done a lot of time. And speaking of Scott's defensive line, what a stop there on that first play. Nicely done. Maybe they come out of the locker room a little bit more fired up. Winfield obviously had that in the first half. Maybe Scott's got it here in the second half. Caden Beam was the ball carrier on that tote there, and he got about a yard. Winfield perfectly content to let that clock roll here. Play clock is going to be 
churning down probably close to inside of five almost this entire half if you're Winfield, and right, I'm, Coach Goble? And I'm sure that uh, Scott's coach has challenged these guys, too, at halftime. You know, like I used to tell them, make up your mind what you want, you know, because you're in control of it. Here comes the toss on the outside. K. John Pearson on the run. He's going to continue to carry tacklers out across to the 38-yard line. Looks like he got himself just enough for the first down. You hear him talking about Hennessy on the tackle. You hear him talking about rack, R-A-C, run after the catch. I call that a wrap. That's run after the pop. <laughs> after the pop. I like that, Coach Goble. Little little wrap there. There you go. For K. Good, John Pearson. Good, good wrap run. There did not get enough for the first down, actually. So we have a third and one. Ball sits Man, on the 43. Tight one right there. A tight one. Eye formation here for Winfield. Brown. Looking over from Coach Smolder, trying to get the play. Play clock ticking inside of five, just like we said. And it looks like Winfield had some miscommunication. And they are going to take themselves a timeout. And we're going to take a timeout with them. We're, we'll be back with more High School Game Day presented by Parmar and HD Media. What started as the Parmar Oil Company in 1967 has grown into 116 convenience stores in four states. Parmar convenience stores offer monthly product specials and grab-and-go items. Located just down the street from where you live, Parmar stores are all about being your above-par convenience store. If you don't have a Parmar store near you now, you will soon. Parmar convenience stores, neighbors serving your community and making life a little bit easier every day. We're back here at Winfield High School. Home of the Generals, top five matchup in double-A. Winfield with a 19 nothing lead, and they've got a third and one to start their initial drive of the second half. Brown's going to take the snap, and he's going to just plow forward, continuing to move forward. That O-line <laughs> getting a little push there, Coach Gilby. you got to love yeah, that. And I'll tell you what happened there. And if you people at home didn't notice, Scott's defense was not ready. They came out there, Winfield lined up, and, and – Two of the down linemen were still standing up. They hadn't even gotten to their stance yet. You can't be doing that stuff when it's that tight. Kind of a quick play there. It sure. might, might be because of how much they continue to kind of milk that play clock a lot right. of times. They didn't expect to come out of the, uh, the timeout. They probably should have. And so first down for Winfield. They fake it to the fullback. Brown's going to continue to carry it. Going to get himself about seven yards there. Nice, nice carry by Brown. Made a guy miss. And we've got ourselves a second and short here. That's got to be something Scott's going to have to do a better job of here in, in the second half, Coach Goble. If they're going to want to get back into this game, cannot continue to have Winfield have second and shorts. That was a really nice uh, trap by the left guard there, pulling, coming downhill, blowing that defensive lineman out of the way that time, too. Brown brings Boggs in motion. He's going to hand it to Caden Beam. No, he's not either. Nice fake, and he's going to actually flip it on the option to Boggs. Got himself a first down. Well, you know, when you're handing it to the Mack truck up the middle there and you're getting all kinds of yards, that's when it starts opening up things at other other places, you know, particularly where they're all uh, closing in so hard on, on the dive play now. They, they might have caught a break, though, Coach Goble, and they did a holding on Winfield. That's one thing that can maybe get Scott back in this game. A couple penalties, get a stop, get a score, put a little game pressure on Winfield. Right now, not a lot of game pressure on the Generals. They're kind of feeling loose, feeling free, feeling easy. And, and you never know. Scott starts rolling and gets a couple scores on the board. It may loom large where uh, Winfield had trouble converting after the touchdown. Keep that in the back of your mind as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. They've, they've left a couple points out there yes, at this point in time. Nine minutes approaching that here in the third quarter. Second and 13. They're going to toss it out to Boggs. Got himself a huge chunk there on second down. There's no doubt that that young man downshifted when he was coming around the corner that time. <laughs> I like it, downshift there. Coach Goble, first down for, Braden Bo for Bray Boggs. And he got himself over 1,000 yards on that carry. It's pretty impressive. Yes. As they recognize him here at Winfield. Pretty impressive, both of these teams, actually. And you were talking earlier, Coach Gill, about how young Scott is. And for them to be number one with all the, the, the sophomores on this roster, it's yeah. pretty incredible. 
they only have three seniors playing on the defense right now, which is pretty wild. And you also see Winfield with a whole senior offensive line. I think that's got to play a role into it. And Boggs going to take the toss again, churning it out to the 40, about to the 38-yard line. Nice little carry was, there for he, Boggs. He was about one step away from uh, breaking that and getting downhill on that one, too. And that's one thing that Scott cannot allow to continue to happen. Boggs getting in the open field and kind of, like you talk about Beam getting ahead of steam, if Boggs gets ahead of steam, he's got a little bit more of explosiveness yep. there than, than, than Beam does. Yeah, and, and, but here's the generals driving once again, playing keep away. That, that precious time is rolling off the clock. Yep, under eight now, and that thunder-lightning combination on the ground. And then you get and then you get Brown occasionally keeping on the keeper. Really tough for Scott. Second and seven. And they're going to hand it off to K. John Pearson on the end of round there. Nice counter play there, defended well. Kind of like that counter there, Coach Goble. They've, they've really executed that well at this point in time. And it all starts handing the ball to the big man in the backfield. When you get that fullback dive going, you can predicate everything else off of that, and you, you have to try to defend all of it. It's, it's really tough, especially if uh, they uh, run a play-action pass here pretty soon. It could be trouble for the Skyhawks. Brown's going to keep it this time, and he's oh. got a little bit, a little tripped up there himself. <laughs> speaking of Halloween. Grass monsters out there. Yes, but speaking of Halloween, I think a ghost tackled him that time. <laughs> <laughs> Scott needs a few more of those ghosts out yeah. there defensively right now. Well, you know, it's 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 funny, but it's not to him, I'm sure. But you get out there, you know, and you get all excited, and, and uh, you get your feet tangled up because you're trying to run. You're going... You know, and then all of a sudden, whoop, what's going on? You sort know. of the Scooby-Doo effect there. <laughs> yeah, right? there you, you go. Know? Yeah. So a timeout called by Winfield. So interesting call here coming out of this, right, Coach Go? We got a fourth and four. You've been dominating the game. Yet if Scott gets a stop and they get field position and that offense, the way they can, like you say, quick strike and are explosive, especially the passing game, sure. could really cause a problem. And – Beware here, this might be an excellent time to run a play-action dump right here. Fake the dive up in there and, and, and throw it. So, Coach Go, well, real quick while we got a minute, I want to let everybody know about Kroger sponsoring the player of the games for all the RSM productions. Stay tuned till the fourth quarter, and at that point in time, we're going to make our selection. Anybody that you're kind of eyeing right now, I think I've got one in particular, but maybe, uh, although we talked about the Thunder Lightning combo, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean... Dana might not be happy if we do two again, though, Coach. And, uh, I, but we might have to. <laughs> as I've uh, uh, alluded to, the uh, uh, Jackson Cunningham is yeah. playing well the game. And yes, also, he is. of course, Caden Beam is making a lot of things happen. And they're going the to toss the bogs, and he is going to get himself enough for the first down, it appears. Looked like he got about six on that play. He needed four. Got a first down there, and, and Winfield's going to continue to keep driving, and they hope continue to kind of take away that collective football soul there for Scott on this drive. Boggs is really uh, uh, elusive in the way that you don't think that he can he can motor like he does, you know, because he he's he's very good at throttling down and reading the defense and then making his cut and getting upfield and he has some great acceleration. Kind of reminds me, Coach Goebel, of sort of a Le'Veon Bell run style, sort of how he picks and chooses but very explosive right. at the same time. Right. And they hand that one to Beam, the guy you say gets it all going there for him. Not a ton on that carry, but you got to have those. Continue to but it's throw it up on that defense. It's making Pound that, on him a little bit of body shot, right? And they're and they're sneaking up in there once, once again, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I always love to get that going, and, and uh, you've heard him talk about earlier in the game, running a, a little slant with your tight end or something in there behind those blitzing linebackers and uh, replace the area that they vacated and just dump the ball there. And good opportunity for the for the dump there, and they just announced Caden Beam over a thousand yards, so multiple a thousand yards rushers, and Brown will take that on 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 the keeper. But a penalty flag thrown in the area of holding there, Coach Goble, it appears. Hasn't hurt him so far, though, the holding oh, call. wait a minute. I think it's face mask. be interesting to see what the call is here. Very crucial. 
and it's a personal foul. Oh, man. Face mask on Scott, not what they needed at all. So now an automatic first down. And then once again, look at the clock. My, how time is flying. I shouldn't say that. Mike jinx us a bit, though. <laughs> Coach Go, well, you're not a, I, I, I do a lot of baseball, and, we, you know, you, we, we, we got to make sure that we, we keep away the superstitions, my friend. Never say anything about that. Huh? Yeah, ex- absolutely. They they listen. You know, there's football guys out there. They they know. They, they want to reward us tonight. Um, this opening drive, though, for Winfield, already about to chew off seven minutes of clock here. So, very nice. Brown's going to fake it. He's going to carry it up in. Not a whole lot on that carry. Scott trying to get tough here at the red zone again. They attempted and almost stopped Winfield at the end of the half, but then they were able to get in on that little end around there from Boggs, made it 19-0. Scott's going to have to do it this time. Incredible patience by the offense. Seven-minute drive now for Winfield. Continuing to just let those precious seconds tick away here. Scott's undefeated season in jeopardy. Winfield attempting to move up. You would say Coach Go will probably – into the top three at least. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would I would think so. Play clock at eight here, as you see. Bring Boggs in motion. Brown will keep it that time. Going with the option again. Not a whole lot. A few yards inside there by Brown. Gain of two yards there for Brown. And they have a third down now for Winfield. They're getting ready to get inside the five at the six-yard line. Third and goal, two downs to go here. Winfield threw a touchdown pass earlier in the game. You might see a little play action here, Coach Goble. Possibly. They're going to hand it off to Boggs. Boggs going to churn inside there, got himself about three. That was a nice uh, uh, power play there. They they used the fullback that time. They blocked down, and, and uh, Caden Beam kicked the defensive end out with the tailback running behind him. They've mixed that up. They haven't done that. That's the first time they've done that this evening. And Coach Smolder told me this week when I talked to him, Coach Goble, about he just wanted to continue to execute better than they did the last week. Right. Well, I don't know if that's possible considering you almost put up 60 on the board there against right. Poke with 49, but against a, great, against a great opponent here tonight, you feel like he's probably going to be pretty happy. Here comes a fourth down play. Boggs in motion. Also impressive by the Winfield O-line to never jump off, never have a false start penalty so far. Very tonight. disciplined team. And so a timeout on the field here. And we'll take one with them. You're watching High School Game Night presented by Parmar on HD Media here for RSN. It's trick-or-treat season and there's three things I can't wait to do. Give away all my candy corn. I'm just not into it. Put on my costume of my best amigo, Wes. Pretty spot on, don't you think? And haul away all my candy in my brand new truck from Dutch Miller Ram of South Charleston. During Ram Power Days, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for up to six years on select 2022 Ram Crew Cab and Quad Cab Laramies and Bighorns. And we are back here. First drive of the third quarter, Winfield has taken it all the way down inside the Scott Five here. They have a fourth down coming, an opportunity to push this lead out to four scores on the number one Scott. Scott Hawks could put the final nail potentially in that coffin, and they'll hand it off to Beam, and it appears he is going to get in for the end zone for a touchdown. Winfield attempting to rip the soul out of Scott here, Coach Goble, and it appears they might just have done it with that Eight minute and 50 second drive to start the third quarter. Yeah, and you know, they just had the good old uh, wedge blocking on the goal line there. Everybody blocked down and drive off the ball and get Caden Beam in there, to adding all that extra weight and just run it right up behind him. Well done by Winfield. They're going to go for two here. Get us that football number. Why not, right? Oh, wait a minute. Nope. They're going oh, they to are going to kick it. They are going to kick it. Uh oh. Hernandez back. For the boot here, and he will put it up, and it's good. Wow, how in the world did he get that one off there? Pretty, pretty pure right there. That one. <laughs> Scott has gotten back there a few times, but to no avail. Now, they uh, uh, still have a chance to put some points on the board if they can get, get their passing game going. But 
I mean, one of the things they dealt with all evening that we, we've seen is the pressure that uh, they're getting. Well, also, I think Coach Goble, you know, we talked about the time of possession, how, how important that is for Winfield in this game. And now, Scott, you know, with that offense needing to get in rhythm, you haven't really been able to get in rhythm with Fry. I mean, right. 25 touchdowns on the year, and Winfield has made him look rather pedestrian at this point. And, and, and what can make it worse is one of the worst things, and I've dealt with a lot of times as a coach, is you have a talented quarterback like they have, and they have a good offense, but if they start pressing too hard, it, it just causes even more problems for them, you know? You keep trying to make the ADR play every right, play right. instead of just taking what they're giving you. Yeah. you got to be patient. Of course, now, you know, you can't be too patient on the other hand. You know, it's getting, it's getting close to panic time. When if you think about it, too, Scott hasn't been out there since it was 13 and up. Well, Winfield, yeah, good Winfield had the great drive to yeah. end, the, end the half with right. a four-minute, 50-second yeah. drive, and then this one, eight minutes and 50 seconds, and now you're down 26 nothing. Yeah, they just haven't had a lot of opportunities. Oh, my, what a lick laid there by Woo. Woo. Cooper. Cooper. Making a big-time hit there for Winfield. He lowered the boom there. Talk about special teams. That's a way to get on the field there, Coach yeah. Goble. Yeah, and, I, you know, like I've been talking about both these teams all night, too. You can tell their discipline and stuff. You know, What did Cooper do on that? He went down and he did his job. He smacked that guy, knocked the daylights out of him. He didn't jump around and look at me or anything. He just jogged off the field. That's right. That's I kind did. of been the Winfield approach. Very sure. business-like so far tonight. And Scott, you know, as far as discipline and everything. Try going to get the shotgun snap. Going to fake it to Cooper. And he hits his man on the slant there. Braden Clark across to the 50. Down to the 45 and... Gets out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Braden Clark a few times now tonight. Got that slant. Gets inside, makes a guy miss, and then be able to kick it back outside. Yep. And what happened I was talking about earlier where he did the RPO there. That's been the best play so far to this point in time sure. for Scott. Linebacker was stepping up, creating a void in there. And that's exactly what he did. He broke off the defender, went to the area where the linebacker would have been. So ball now on the, on the 40. Fry back to pass. And he will complete that to Jaden Sharps. Cross to the 30. Going to get himself a first down inside the 29-yard line. Scott finally starting to try and cook here a little bit on offense. And like I said, they, they, I would really be surprised they didn't go two-minute offense the rest of the game. You're almost surprised they're huddling right now, right? Yeah. I mean, at this point in time, but playing with a lot of tempo and pace. Well, and the, and the thing about it is, too, where he's getting the quick release. And there's going to be a timeout on the field officials having a little bit of a discussion there with Isaiah Bush and they're going to let him roll back again. I have no idea what that was I, about. I, <laughs> you probably have to be one of those two to know and not necessarily <laughs> want to be a fly in the room on that conversation either. And so Cooper will take that handoff. No, it's Brian Gar actually on that on that handoff. And he got really close to a first down. We're going to get a late penalty flag thrown there. I imagine that one's going to be on Winfield. A little extracurriculars, although potentially Scott tried to make a, a hit there at the end. They are pointing Winfield's way. We'll wait to call here. And it appears we are going to have ourselves a dead ball personal foul on Winfield. They're going to give Scott the ball now inside, I'd imagine, well, the 15-yard line here, Coach Go. And the ebb and the flow has changed. The question is, though, how much time does Scott really need to pull this thing off? I don't know if they've got quite what they need here. Inside handoff to Brian Gear. Well, nice if, they carry. Keep, if they keep going at this pace, keep in mind we have an entire quarter left. And, uh, you know, it's possible for them to, to – Start getting things done. The big key, obviously, you've got to come away with a touchdown here, and then you've got to get a quick three and out. Right. That's what Scott needs more than anything. It'd be nice to score points. you got to do that too, but you're going to have to make some stops. Fry, that ball's going to be deflected. Nicely done there by K. John actually, Pierce. Yeah, actually, uh, he probably did Fry a, a, a favor there because I believe that one would have been picked. Oh, I think that's pick six territory <laughs> right there. I think he was almost surprised that he still was going to throw it at him like a basketball defender there getting his hand in the passing lane. Third down and five for Scott. At the six, Fry back to pass. 
He's going to chuck it in the end zone. Incomplete. Trying to get Jaden Sharps. Both Sharps and Bush talking with each other, trying to figure out what was going on, maybe asking for a call, maybe trying to. Yeah, it looks like I, they may have uh, had a bust on the route there or something because they, they didn't seem like they were in sync there. It's, it's been that way all night for Scott. Have not been able to get into rhythm. Probably their best drive to this point in time in the game. Yeah. And now they're going to need to punch it in for seven right here, Coach Goble. And this is where you want to throw it to your best receiver because you're going to get man coverage down here on the goal line. And we're going to have a timeout taken. Don't talk about it. And we'll take one with them. Timeout by Winfield. You're watching High School Game Night presented by Parmar and HD Media here on RSN. Buying a car is easier than ever. We're introducing the area's only personal shopper to help you find the perfect ride. This no pressure team can help you find the vehicle in your budget, appraise your trade, work out payments, even pick out a vehicle that fits your needs and send you all the information. You can have the car delivered to your house or choose our fast pass delivery and we'll have everything ready for you to pick up your new car quickly. Tell us exactly what you're looking for, your payment range and terms, and let us find the best options for you. Just go to tajiefor.com and see for yourself. And we are back, approaching the fourth quarter, a minute 43 in the third of the top five matchup here in Double A. The Winfield Generals, our home standing team here, with a 26 to nothing lead on the number one Scott Skyhawk. Scott trying to keep that dream undefeated season alive, and they've got a big fourth down coming. No doubt one of the biggest plays of the game right here. They wanted to talk about it. Winfield wanted to talk about it, actually. Gave Scott more time to drop a play there for Coach Dolan. So here comes Fry out of the shotgun. Got some pressure on the backside. He's going to roll out. Fry's going to get himself just enough, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Scott. Matt Fry making a play with his feet at the most absolutely crucial time for Scott. And once again, a defensive end. Came rolling in there unabated. I don't know what their scheme was or anything, but that's that could make you nervous as a coach. Absolutely. Well, you <laughs> saw Fry, and Fry must have been able to sense that from the backside, and he took off. And so Scott's on the board here. What a fine young athlete that quarterback is. He's he's got a great future ahead of him. Oh, and they're going for they are going to kick the extra point here. Green has a boot. And he's going to get that one. And like we talked about earlier, watch out for conversions and how that might affect everything. Old Mo maybe jumping on the Scott Scott sideline. We we're talking about Scott's offense. Hey, guess what? How long did it take them to score that on that drive? About a minute and a half, maybe. If that, Coach Goble. So definitely have that quick strike ability there. Fry's twenty six. And they're they're getting. They're getting success with the quick stuff. You know, we were talking about earlier how they kept trying to go downtown all the time and where they run the RPO and getting the quick stuff, what happens there, the, the pressure's not working now because they're blasting in there and they're getting rid of that ball. Fry with that 26 yards rushing now in his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Winfield getting ready to get that offense back on the field now. If you're Scott, Coach Goble, you got to take some chances, right? We got to run some pressures, got to get some blitzes. You know Winfield's going to keep the ball on the ground. And you got to kick on side right here. You think so? <laughs> oh, I would. Yeah. Why not? We got right? to lose, right? The only thing you're going to lose is more time on the other end, so you might as well <laughs> give them a shorter be, field, right? Might be inevitable anyway, you know. Yeah. Boggs is back deep here for Winfield at the 25, but Coach Goble doesn't think it's going to get to him anyway. So here comes Green, toe going to meet the leather. Oh. And he is going to kick it on a, kind of a short pooch along the sideline. And I believe it looks like Scott's going to come uh -huh. down with that, Coach Goble. What an amazing pooch that, on side there by Scott. They must have been listening to me. Absolutely. <laughs> little little different design there. That's yeah. something you see on Saturdays there, Green. Very good kicker here for Scott. And, and here's what happened here. And this might get to be where it's a lot of fun again now because – that last series, they did what they wanted, throwing that football down there. They march this thing down the field and score again. Some people are going to start getting nervous. Uh, you know, Coach Goble, I'm almost sensing it already here. We're, we're kind of amongst the Winfield faithful. We just right. perched just a, a couple rows ahead of them. 
Fry back to pass. He's going to chuck it deep. And it's going to be caught. What a play right there by Braden Clark. Huge play, and Scott's and running down there on the field. And Phineas T. Barnum would call that a circus catch. P.T. Barnum would probably be pretty happy about it yeah, too, right? We got a Winfield General down at the 25. Ball now. is inside the five-yard line, though, for Scott when we come back to play, though. Well, and the thing we talk about, you know, the, the, the momentum has shifted totally. Like Sonny said, oh, Mo. Now, on, let me ask you this. What happens the they, if they punch this one in and get another onside kick? Oh, everybody here and on the Winfield the sideline is going to be a little nervous. The other thing you got to think about is, too, it's not the fourth quarter yet. No. Scott's, Scott's got a little bit of juice right now. And Fry will take the shotgun snap here. Going to hand. He did faked it to Brian Gear, and he's going to get in again for a touchdown. Wow. Uh-oh. And it is silent here on the home sideline from Winfield. Scott getting real fired up. Matt Fry with his second rushing touchdown into the same corner in about 30 seconds, Coach Goble. We've got, we got ourselves a ball game again. About 2,000 people sitting down in front of us in a little shell shock. I don't right think now. they like us right now. We might be a little <laughs> loud for them over here, Coach Goble. Well, you can say that. Of course, I graduated from here, so they, they love me. <laughs> they know you. They know you. <laughs> they, they know you're here in good faith. They'll probably even matter at me for saying anything about you're, I'm also glad you're with me. You're, you're kind of a big guy there, a little bodyguard. Green with the extra point. That one looks like it's going to be pure. Wow. And so Scott, that explosive <laughs> offense, bang, bang, two touchdowns, and now it's 26 to 14 with a minute 19 to go in the third quarter. We're going to take a break here on High School Game Night, presented by Parmar on RSN. Come on back with us. Winter is coming. It's time to remember Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. With cooler days ahead, now is the time to call Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling and schedule your heating system tune-up. Our experienced technicians will provide you peace of mind with our comprehensive 15-point system service. The Mullen Heating System Service and Safety Inspection will ensure you aren't left in the cold this winter. Remember, Mullen Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Call and schedule your tune-up today or visit us online at mullenplumbing.com. And we are back here in Winfield, top five matchup. Number one, Scott getting back off the mat here with 14 unanswered after it was 26 nothing. Coach Goebel, are we doing another one side kick here? Absolutely. Other side? Or are you going on or are you going on the far side again towards your guys? I'll go toward my my bench. Do it again. Yep. Here comes Green. He's gonna pop it up, same spot. This one's gonna be fair caught by Winfield, not as uh, <laughs> successful as the last one. Now, the big question is here now, which is going to become ever more important now, is how much can Winfield play keep away now? Absolutely. You know, and it's funny, I talked to Coach Smolder earlier in the week, and I said, is there gonna be an element of that to this game? And he didn't really wanna answer me straight, but I think he knew if they got the lead, they were going to definitely try to employ this on Scott in that passing game. Especially with that offense they run. They're going to bring Boggs in motion. Play clock now ticking away now, the under question 10. Is, now, this is where it can get dangerous for the offense. They get a little impatient here. Hand off the beam. And try to do something out of character. Gain of about two yards there. On the carry for Beam. Second and eight coming. Kind of pound him inside there with Beam. Get the drive started. Staying positive. Down in distances here. If you win, Phil, going to continue to roll that clock here. Third quarter. We're ticking under 50 seconds to go. Top five matchup here in double A. And Brown under center. He's going to keep it. Oh, and the ball man. may have did not come out there, but a nice play right there by Scott. Their defensive front all over it there. Connor Hughes lead, leading the charge there, the six foot, 210 pound senior. And so now a third down coming up here for the Generals. This is not what Coach Smolder would have designed for this drive for sure. I wonder if Winfield will try to throw it here. 
I'll tell you one thing, Coach Job. I don't think they're going to take a play here. They're going to throw up the fours. We're going to go to the fourth quarter here. Yep, Down here on the Canal River. Bit. Winfield Generals with a 26 to 14 lead over Scott. Come on back with us for the fourth quarter. It's going to be a good one. You're watching High School Game Day presented by Parmar here on RSN. Make sure you are informed. With HD Media, we are leading the state in local, digital, and print media. We are storytellers. We focus on education, health, entertainment, politics, opinions, sports, and the outdoors through our websites, print, or social and mobile apps. We work every day to enhance the lives of our customers by informing, entertaining, and empowering our readers in the communities we serve. We are HD Media. are back here for the fourth quarter top five matchup number one Scott on the road here against Winfield the number five generals with a 26 14 lead and a big third down looming Brown takes the snap and he's going to run the toss to Boggs good block on the outside and Scott's going to converge on him going to be very very close going to continue to drive oh, his legs across to the 50 down. sure looks like it it's got to be Really, really tough pill to swallow there for Scott. You got a third down and ten. There is a flag on the play, though. We are hearing that. Would be a huge call here if Winfield has to put this thing in reverse. Jaden Sharps came out of there hobbling a little bit, but I think he's okay. Looks like he's got a little bit and of pain going there. Got a there. penalty on Scott. Personal foul on Scott. So an injury down on the field. Never something that we want to see. While we have a quick second here, we want to remind you that in the fourth quarter, we will announce our Kroger player of the game. They are the player sponsorship for all of our productions here on RSN. And me and Coach Gobel will make that selection in the fourth quarter, Kroger player of the game. And Bray Boggs is coming back out. Good to see the young man get up. Also want to remind you real quickly about Frontier Communications. We thank them for providing tonight's production for this broadcast via the Media Center. Big thanks to Frontier Communications. Also, a big thanks to West Virginia's Coal Association. Still coal keeps the lights on in the stadiums here across the state of West Virginia. And also, Martin Transport. Join our team of professional drivers today. The best pay and benefits. Learn more at driveformartintransport.com. Again, that's driveformartintransport.com. So, Coach Gobel, 11.50 to go here. Tough penalty for the Skyhawks there. Yeah, big time. And you got to think now Scott's going to have to pull out some type of blitz here or something to get a negative play or create a turnover. Brown. Brings the man in motion, and he's going to keep it himself. Churn up in there. Good little gain for about three. Another nice lead block by Caden Beam there up into the hole. Does it all, Coach Goebel. Hits, hits the man head on in the scheme, takes it himself. So we've got ourselves a, a short six, long seven here. Fourth quarter clock going to start becoming an adventure and an <laughs> Not something that Scott wants to deal with here. Yeah, time is becoming precious. It's an enemy for the Skyhawks here. Second and six. Winfield. They're going to hand it to Boggs. Boggs across to the 30. Down to the 25. Continuing to move and turn his feet inside to the 20-yard line for Bray Boggs. Coach Gove, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Bray Boggs is making a strong case to be that Kroger player of the ballgame. He certainly is. Explosive is number seven for the Generals. Can't hide him in those camo uniforms, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and it, it, it's so uh, it's so tough 
when you're when you're playing well and you put a couple scores on the board and then you have a, a have that penalty and uh, the generals just come back and hammering away chewing that clock scott had all the momentum but it's jumped back on the general sideline now they're going to hand it to beam and beam's going to turn up in there going to get himself a nice little game of about five yards there for Caden Beam. Maybe give it six there for Beam. And this clock is going to continue to keep ticking here. Keep churning. The Generals keep with those body blows. Right. With Scott right now. And that's, one, that's where, you know, they're saying, well, make up your mind. What do you want? And they are, you know. Absolutely. You, know, you made the point, Coach Goebel, about you said that for Scott, they got a little bit on him, and now Winfield trying to do the same. Second and four. Handoff to Beam. Going to carry carry folks ahead. And Looks like he's going to be right at the first down marker. And I think I talked about this earlier. When you get two good teams here, so far what has made the difference? Penalties. Yep. Yeah. Some big penalties on Scott to extend drives. Right. And then penalties the, and mistakes are, are game killers. And you know. I would say, Coach Gilbert, well, you'd swing of the drive coming out of into the half and out of the half. Right. For Winfield punching both in for touchdowns and Boggs all around the outside. Sp spinning around like a dervish top there with <laughs> Boggs. And he's gonna get inside the six there, not quite inside the five yard line there for Boggs. What an impressive young man. Very, very impressive there for Bray Boggs. And I and I can only imagine the 5'11", 175 pound senior is gonna be a guy we might hear from playing on Saturdays here next year, Coach Go. Yep, it looks like we have a little timeout for blood, I think, on his arm or something there. Boggs, Boggs wants to get it cleared up and wants to get back out there in a, here in a hurry. He's smelling the end zone. Here. And I think I think if he was getting the uh, ball, I believe he changed the play there. Might give it to Beam now, wouldn't you imagine there, Well, we've got twin receivers to the right here. They may mess around and do a little play-action dump here now. You never know. Now, now my question is, Coach Goble, though, why stop the clock? And right. Although nine minutes to go. So, Brown going to keep it. Brown going to get inside about to the four-yard line there. Brought down inside there by Caden Mills for Scott. Another uh, nice block that time by Caden Cunningham coming around through there. And so now a third down. Ball at the four. Maybe call it to three. Scott has tried to bow their neck and get tucked down here in, inside the five a few times. This is going to be a big one here. They hand it to Beam. And he's continuing to drive. Not quite. Does not look like he got in there, Coach Goble. Looks like he's about to the one. Gain of three for Caden Beam. And so Scott's undefeated season on the line right here, right now, Coach Goble. Eight minutes to go in the fourth. Fourth down and goal from the one. I think we're just going to see him. Good old-fashioned sneak right here. Little Ozzy Osbourne crazy train trying to get these Winfield General yeah. fans pumped up. Appears to be working. They know they might be able to put the final coffin in the nail right here. Brown takes the snap, and he's going to hand it off. And it's a touchdown for the Generals. Touchdown. Winfield. Ray Boggs. Made sure he got back out there, Coach Goble, from the scrape there with a little blood, wanted to find that end zone. Well, I I'll tell you right now, I know we got a little bit of time left, and I've done quite a few games this year. This may be the best double A team I have seen. They're tough. They're, They're so tough. dedicated and so disciplined to their plan and what they do. Yeah, they, you know, they, they don't stray from what they want to do. And Coach Smolder talked about just wanting to execute better each week. And man, they've executed tonight. So they're going to go for two here. Brown out of the shotgun. And he's going to pass. And it looks like he's going to find his man on the inside there on the slant. Lawtree with the catch there. Nicely done. And so Winfield now with a 34 to 14 lead. We've got 7.34 to go in the fourth quarter. Come on back with us. Scott's got an explosive offense, guys. You're watching 
High School Game Night here on, on RSN and HD Media presented by Parmar. I'm attorney Bobby Warner. Congress recently created a fund to compensate victims of Camp Lejeune who were exposed to toxic waters between 1953 and 1987. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with cancer or other health issues related to toxic water exposure at Camp Lejeune, call today for a free case evaluation. Bobby Warner, now's the time. Call 345-6789. So we're back here in the fourth quarter from Winfield. Blaine Smith and Coach Goble here with you, bringing you a top five matchup in double A. Number one, Scott on the ropes, down 20 here with 7.34 to go, but they have an explosive offense, Coach Goble. Going to have to get it geared up right now, right here. Kickoff return, going to get it inside the 40, up to the 45, turning his legs, going to maybe get to the 47. So that's good field position for Matt Fry and the offense to work with. I'm sure the Skyhawks won't uh, back down here and they're going to do everything they can, but it's going to get to where it's going to be tough sledding to be able to overcome uh, their deficit now. Well, you got to think, right, Coach Go, with, if you're Scott, you got to be playing with tempo, playing with pace, trying to get on the ball every play. If they can get if they can get one touchdown, they've already had one successful onside kick. Yeah. So, you know you got that in your bag. And in your back pocket if you're Scott, Coach Dolan. Fry will take the shotgun snap. Again with that RPO fake, trying to get the slant on the inside there to Clark. And a nice job in coverage there. By the corner, Caden Cunningham doing a nice job there. The sophomore getting in on the stop. Read that play very well there to Cunningham and was able to jump that slant. Scott's had that work a few times tonight. Wasn't able to get it there, though. 7.22 to go. Second down and 10. Fry takes the snap. Hands that one off to Brian Gear and not a lot. Cunningham on the inside making the play. Who else, Coach Go? And Winfield uh, changing up strategy a little bit. They played a... a zone defense at time with uh, two deep. They're not going to try to not let anything behind them, of course. Yeah, they don't want to let Bush, Brian Gear, and Clark get moving and really give Scott any hope at all. Third down and 11 here for Scott at the 46-yard line. Fry parking out the signals. He'll take the shotgun snap. Back to pass. Going to go deep down the sideline. He's got a man. Just overthrew his intended target, Isaiah Bush. Good ball there by Matt Fry. Just a little too much mustard on it, and Bush wasn't able to haul it in. Yeah, Fry has a really nice arm. He's, he's going to go a long way in his future throwing that football. Key, though, tonight for Winfield has been able to move him off the spot there, Coach Go, and they've done a great job yeah. up to this point. Yeah, the thing, thing about it is, and uh, give all the credit to Winfield, he, he has not had the opportunity to be comfortable the whole night, you know. And, and, and the rhythm factor as well. Right, right. Fourth down and 11. Winfield on their feet. Fry takes the snap, going to roll out. Going to run. He's going to chuck it downfield, has his man, and he hauls it in. Wow, what Big a catch. time play right there by Isaiah Bush. He's the big play receiver for Scott, and he made a big catch there. Inside, down to the six-yard line. And so, Scott, they're never not going say away die. Yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Coach Coble. They're going to keep pitching it. They're going to keep flinging it around yep. here. They're going to make Winfield play a full 48 minutes to get this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. And, and the thing that, that's uh, one of the redeeming factors about what we're watching here tonight, uh, highly unlikely that Scott can come back and win this game. But the thing about it is they, they're going to live to play another day in the postseason. Absolutely. So it's not over for them. Get some stuff on film. Try and maybe you might see these guys again. Nice little counter play on the inside there. Brian Gear took the carry. Didn't get a whole lot there. Trying to go a little too much east and west. Not enough north and south. Fourth quarter clock is ticking though. Coach Goble 5:45 and counting. Winfield with a 34 to 14 lead. Yeah, it's definitely their enemy now. Scott 
Trying to get on the ball quick, but you have to execute still. In wide here. They got four wide trips. And they're going to bring this defense. Bush has in. a man on man on the outside, and Fry's going to take it himself. Throws it. Just a little too tall for his intended receiver, he just, Bush. He just, it's so difficult for him to try to get in the rhythm to get anything done with the pressure coming from different spots. And when you're throwing on the run like he is right there, there's just no rhythm and continuity right now in this Scott offense, unfortunately, at this point in time. Big third down here for Winfield, trying to get the crowd into it. A little bit is Cunningham and the boys down there on that defensive line. 20-point lead for the Generals. 5-19 in the fourth. Fry had himself two rushing touchdowns, cut it to 12, and then Winfield was able to go on a nice little drive and punch it in the end zone. He'll take the shotgun snap, got a lot of pressure, not able to see anything there, and just flings it almost an interception yeah, from the linebacker. Cunningham. Fighting for his life. Yeah. Got to give Cunningham a lot of credit, though. He's been very gutsy in this game. Yeah, well, you know, like I told you, his father was a well of a player. And you got to give Fry a lot of credit, too, Coach Go. Well, he's continuing to take shots, and stay, and stay out there, and continue to lead his team. Right. And might have a chance still, if they punch this in, to make it at least interesting here True. for the last five minutes and 14 seconds. Play the ball game here for Scott. Down 20, if they have any chance, they're going to have to make it happen right here, right now. Cooper runs into motion. They bring Brian Gear off. Fry's going to throw it, and he's going to complete it into the middle of the field. Way short, I do believe. For his, for his man. There, Finnerland. And it's going to not be enough for the for the first down, and so Winfield's going to take it over here with 5.08 to play. And Coach Go, well, I'd be surprised if they give it up. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's down to the point now, especially with the way they like to grind that clock. Uh, you know, it, it's a very real possibility that the Skyhawks will not have another possession tonight. Now, Coach Go will obviously what this does for the rankings moving forward. Scott. Easily still a team that's going to be in the top eight. Oh, yeah. But what that's it does for Winfield, though, it, it bolsters them probably in the top two, you'd sure, imagine. I Big, would think. With the points you get off that, nice little end around run action there. Bray Boggs not able to get much on that carry. Winfield's totally content to let this clock. Right, and some of the fans are chip away. slowly filing out of the stadium now. Yeah, they got a long drive back to Madison. They, yeah. might, they might go ahead and get a little – a little head start on us, obviously. Yeah. 440. I don't even want to talk about long drives. Taken away. Coach Go, well, I don't have as long. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get back on that bridge and cruise right on down into Nitro. There you go, buddy. Well, I'm spending the night in Scott Depot tonight. So You're, so. you're a lucky man. It won't, won't be yeah. too long for you either. My old you see the play town. clock ticking into 10. Brown snaps it, and he's going to just – Plunge forward on the keeper for a few yards. Not a lot there for Brown. Well, the Generals may get another chance at uh, possession here. Scott might, yeah, like you said, Coach Gibb. Winfield not trying to take too many chances at this point right. in time. Clock is going to continue to run here. Probably won't snap it again until 3.30 with a 20-point lead. Well... And this is the time of the game. I always like to say, get out and say something good about high school football. It's a great game. High school athletics and, and all, you know. You're going to take the run there from Boggs, and he is going to continue to just motor his way up inside close to the 25-yard line. Bray Boggs, and he gets the ball, Coach Kogel. <laughs> Looks like one of those runaway coal trucks down Wyoming County. He just goes, <laughs> avoid those, avoid Man, he, those. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a – You know he, a thing or two about that, right? Yes, you know? I do. Yeah. But uh, he is uh, – he's definitely a college prospect. Now, the question here now, right, if you're Scott, obviously, tonight didn't go your way, right? Right. 
What are you saying for Coach Dahl? You just got to get those guys in there and and say, you know, thank them for playing as hard as they could and say, you know, the, the bad news is we lost, but the good news is, guess what? It's not the end of the world. We're going to live to play another day. No. And and we take care of business next week. I don't know if they have a game or not. I haven't checked. But, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have an opportunity. It, it, it's not over. Right, you know? exactly. And Everything's still ahead of you if you're, if yeah, you're Scott. And, and there's no sense at all of – getting on them or anything, you know, because you can tell by watching watching these guys, they play as hard as they can play. It's and a good football team. It's, it's sure. maybe not the greatest matchup for a team that's a little younger right. than even Winfield. A lot of seniors on that roster compared to Scott having sophomores. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like you said earlier, it was the ground attack versus, versus the air. Right. And Winfield had the home crowd, the war zone, the camo, they hit them in the right. mouth. Right. And then the two scores out of the third quarter in the beginning of the, in the beginning. Of the half there, it really, really kind of put Scott behind the eight ball. Nice little run there by Bean. Well, I don't think that they have faced anyone talent-wise as good as Winfield this year. May not be anybody in Double A as good as Winfield no. talent-wise. Right. I mean, you think about it; they're alone lost to Hurricane in the opener. They've reeled off now eight straight wins. Right. And we know how good Hurricane is. So. You hear, you hear the general faithful showing their support, letting them know. They're saying they're going to say a lot of nice things about this football team here around sure. Winfield for the next couple of weeks, Coach Go, after like, this one tonight. Like I said, talk about uh, high school football. Everybody's having and a they good give time it over here. to the up man. And it's your boy Caden Bean there. The freight train. Coach Goble got a little head of steam ahead of him. Another general first down. The clock's going to start up. Under a minute 30 to go. Interestingly enough for Winfield, a team that was ranked ahead of them in the AA rankings, right. Coach Goble at this point right. in time, is actually going in, in, is in a, a battle for their life here with Frankfurt, North Marion at number four. So Winfield would jump them, as well as you can say jump Scott, at least number three coming in the next week. They'll hand it off to Beam. And you know the thing about it is, too, um, it is so tough to go undefeated. I mean, to start, level. Yep. you got to be lucky. you got to be good. We thought there for a minute, Scott good game. might just get a little bit lucky right. there off the sure. – they have the onside kick to cut it to 26-14. Wasn't able to quite pull it off, and you hear the general faithful getting – all the love. They're going to take a knee here. That's going to end it. Big time game for Winfield. They up, upset, if you want to call it an upset. I don't think they do. And who's but our player of the game? We have Bray Boggs there. Of course. Coach Goble. Bray Boggs, your Kroger player of the game, had himself an evening. I heard his name called a lot tonight. And a great football game, like you said, Coach yeah, Goble. And, you know, just, it, it, it's, yeah, you know, I've done this all my life, and, and uh, you heard me talk about all the little intangibles and stuff. It's so heartwarming to me to, to see these kids play, you know, good, clean football, no, no, nothing rough or any of that stuff. And they're just, uh, they're amazing uh, what they've done and both these programs. And uh, hats off to both of them. And the thing about it is, like I said, both these teams are going to live and play another day. That's so right. They may see each other again here as we creep closer might to, be just to Thanksgiving and to Wheeling. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, that's right. And obviously, it would be an advantage for Scott if they see each other again because now you've seen that offense once. Right. And you never know where they might be playing that game as well right. later down the line. You know both teams have pretty good pretty good games to close it out there. I know Winfield's got a tough one. And you know how, how coaches are if it would – Happen to evolve to where these guys are playing each other again. They're going to pick film apart and figure out everything and make adjustments and all that good stuff, you know. And you'd also have to say, if you're Scott, you didn't feel like you played maybe your best tonight. Right. Winfield had it all working tonight. Again, our player of the game, Bray Boggs. Bryson Brown was great on the ground. Caden Beam, Jackson Cunningham. The yeah. generals played themselves a football game. And you see them out there, student section, team, everybody loving what they saw tonight. Right. 
It's going to be a party in Winfield tonight, Coach yeah. Good was they're saying here at the state. Like I said, what's not to love about high school football? Greatest game in the world. Hey, Coach Good, well, great working with you. You too. It was too. a fun one tonight. Scott, number one, goes down here in Winfield, 34-14. to 14. The Generals just look, starting that climb there and, for and, Smolder Soldiers. And look at the mascot there, how much fun he's having in the middle of that crowd. Oh, man, what a hat he has, too, there. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> That's something right there. I almost didn't see him with all the camo going there on there for Winfield. <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal football game. Like you said, Coach Go, we'll go say something nice about somebody. We thank sure. you for joining us. Yeah. And uh, we hope we hope you guys come around. Playoffs are starting soon, so it's going to be fun. Join you guys on, what, Wednesday nights for the – or Thursday night for the tailgate show, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. I, I can never figure it out. I think you all had the one week where the Marshall WB yeah, games kind of threw you off a little honestly, bit. Honestly, I just wait on uh, Dana's text. <laughs> Dana's text, yeah. I always like seeing you go down to the beach there, Coach Gobel, in oh, your yeah. background there. Yeah, so, there we go. Yeah, I'm going to have a new one this week. There, so, there you go. With my Hawaiian shirt on, yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate you coming in here and allowing us to be a part of it, Winfield, tonight. Scott, great showing. And we thank you for HD Media, Parmar for the game day, allowing us to be here. Thank you again, RSN, for bringing this contest to you. One last time tonight, the number one Scott Skyhawks go down here in Winfield, 34-14. to 14. The Generals on their climb from number five, and you see them plant that flag in the ground as we sign off. Y'all have a good evening.